I was it. I didn't have the bike on. Welcome, everybody, to a very special episode of The Line, because today's episode is our happy birthday, Matthew Dillahunty. Real loser, that Matthew Dillahunty. Matt Dillahunty's birthday is today. Happy birthday. Not today. It's not. What, what day is it? It's Friday. I almost put this on backwards. I tried to do the whole thing during the intro. I thought Matt would laugh harder if he didn't see it beforehand, and... He didn't laugh at all, so it wasn't worth it. Hey, welcome, everybody, to a very special birthday episode of uh, The Sunday Show. That is why we are starting early. We've started at 1 o'clock today instead of our normal 3 o'clock. Is that what time we usually go? Also, today, a very uh, uh, special episode. This is the very first ever sponsored episode of anything on the line. We are... Uh, uh, sponsored today by adamandeve.com. If you're looking for some good adult wholesome fun in a way for Matt's birthday, we've gotten you a gift. So if you want to go get some play things to, to, well, to play with or to look hot in, uh, that, that, that good adult fun that we can't really descriptively tell you about and stay monetized on YouTube, uh, adamandeve.com. And you use the code LINE at checkout, L-I-N-E. You get 50% off one item, plus free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. Some, some exclusions apply, just not many. 90 days, no hassle. Returns, no need to explain yourself. If you need to return something, you decided to experiment and it doesn't work out, uh, plus 20% of their profits go to fighting HIV worldwide. AdamandEve.com, code LINE at checkout. It's a pretty exciting day for us. Uh, a first ever yes. sponsored episode of the Sunday show. What a what a birthday gift from us to them, really. It's wonderful. Indeed. I'm thrilled. Yeah. I know I don't sound like it. I'm not being facetious. I'm actually... So today's been uh, a, a good day. They, some weirdness over the last couple of days. Yesterday, Arden and I went to um, another reptile convention, and we're doing another one next week. Um, we didn't come back with any new snakes. Uh, I did get some hatch trays, and we got some strawberry bread and some lemon bread from this wonderful vendor who was there selling her homemade bread. And she had the, the this little thing of like a lemon glaze. And so if you took the strawberry bread and just put just a little lemon glaze on it, it's literally one of the best things I've ever eaten. So we had some of that. And um, this morning we fed like half of the snake collection. And um, yeah, I'm ready to do a show. It's been there's been a lot of transphobic stuff. There's been a lot of pro Jesus stuff. There's several people on Twitter who I've, you know, either politely challenged to call in or basically accused them of being a coward uh, if they didn't for some of them. Some of them were advertising uh, Christian screened news sources. Others were just posting anti-trans stuff. Some of them were we're going down the our claims evidence thing and is atheism the null hypothesis or default position all of that was going on and then i got an amazing email which i posted on facebook um to friends only uh, because i called anna kasparian out for her transphobic post as did a bunch of other people and people were just coming in afterwards going Oh, stop your mansplaining, and you just don't understand. She's just talking about what it's like to really be a woman, and you should shut your pie hole and all this other stuff. Um, and that's cool, but uh, the reply that I got from this one person, I'm trying to try to do this without a voice. Greetings. I've been seeing some especially lizard-brained behavior from various sources regarding Anna Kasparian's tweet and sentiments re regarding terms she would not like to be defined by. She basically said, uh, I'm a woman. Please don't call me a, a uterus haver, womb haver, menstruating person. And as we pointed out on Wednesday's show, nobody's suggesting anybody call any individual that um, these are general terms for a, a broader category. Um, and you fit in the category or you don't. If you say, if you have a womb and somebody says the category today, the category today is womb havers. Okay, well, that's not what we're going to refer to you all the time, but when we're talking about those things. That's the category. But he continues. It's interesting because a lot of you seem to have no problems giving her the context of being a woman with an exceptional track record as well as foundational and practical experience in spaces which include social media. Um, cool. Looking at her as a professional should inform anyone with a working brain that she's an expert on such matters. No, sorry, that's not how expertise works at all. 
Um, and yet, he says, this context has been abandoned by all of you when it comes to offering final evaluation, which usually goes, she's not transphobic, but I didn't go that way. She's transphobic. What she said and did was absolutely transphobic. Is she the worst of the bunch? No. I mean, should we cancel? No. You know, there is no cancel. There's accountability. She said something transphobic. We called her out. It's not even that big a deal. Um, but he continues... The empathetic thing to do, especially if you're a friend, so he considers Anna a friend or thinks we should be treating her like a friend, is to validate that experience, trusting that all the professional experience you rightfully acknowledge was present when she was weighing, speaking her mind on this topic. You, you lot, on the other hand, decided to meet a beeline for the, make a beeline for the eggshells people were scattering in response to her. That's called abuse, and I'm speaking as someone who's... That's called abuse, and I'm speaking as someone who has taken an interest in psychology and neuroscience and who's an expert in narcissistic abuse. Ooh, taking an interest. I believe that you are an expert in narcissistic abuse. Um, <laughs> and I don't think that your interest in psychologically, psychology or neuroscience does anything for this. But he continues on and on and on. And it's, you know, it's leaving Kasparian alone. <laughs> and so I replied, she's never going to go out with you. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I imagine that the person who wrote that email looked a little bit like this. That's why I decided to redon the apparel. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, speaking of transphobes, funnily enough, because I've been looking at comments this morning, we had a transphobe call in last night when I was doing an episode of Cause I Wanna, and uh, that transphobe was named Matt. And so uh, we're enjoying all the comments today of like, man, Jimmy smoked Matt. What an asshole, <laughs> that, that sort of stuff. And this individual who, <laughs> by the way, I think last night was a perfect example of there are people who are like, these people are just impatient. They yell you down. If you don't agree with them, if you're a theist, they're just going to talk over you. And yesterday we had tons of great conversations with theists. A couple of them I got impatient with, but I didn't hang up on. And at one point I went, okay. You didn't actually say what I think you're about to say. I'm going to take a second. I'm going to stop letting my blood pressure raise, and I'm going to let you say it first. And then they said it first, but uh, uh, it did still come. Uh, but then uh, the only person I rage hung up on, it wasn't even a rage hang up on, it was the guy told me I was rude, and I was like, would it have been even more rude if I just hung up on you while you were speaking? And then I hung up. Uh, was an atheist. Was the That's atheist right. transphobe Matt? What's that? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I was saying that. So I've been thinking more and more about this because a lot of the excuses for the people who don't want to call in, one is, well, it's your platform. You get to, get to sit there and hover your finger over the hold button and all this other stuff, and you're going to talk over people. Um, that's true. That happens. Oh, well, you're just going to get mad and hang up as soon as they make a good point. That's never happened. Yeah. But, no, no. Have I gotten mad and hung up? You bet. Has it occurred after someone has made a good point? Not yeah. once. This yeah. is the delusional world that people are in where they think, oh, the atheists just want you to call in so they can hang up on you when you're trying to, to say the right thing. No, you can call in, but if you're calling in just to preach and not back any of it up, I don't have any interest in letting you continue. Yeah. Um, but if you're calling to have an actual honest discussion where you're willing to present argument and evidence, where you answer questions like that, neither Jimmy and I, rarely do we even get uh, excited over that. And those are the best conversations. I've had calls that lasted 45 minutes all because somebody is being an honest interlocutor and not just in the nuh -uh, or the one the worst one let me smugly come in here and pretend that i'm lecturing you guys um on something that you clearly just don't understand even though you know more about it than i do <laughs> and when you ask your questions you know i don't know what you're talking about the guy who called in a week or so ago um where I was like, yep, you win. You're just smarter than me. You know more about this, whatever else. There's no other recourse to that when somebody's just going to go down the vocabulary route. And, well, you know, let me throw in every um, big word that's, that I've heard that's relevant to this while showing that I haven't even studied the basics of, you know, hard solipsism or anything else. Yeah. Um, and it's fine. It would be much better. There's tons of shit I don't know. Uh, it would be much better if you just said you didn't know. Yeah. Also, I mean, cool. That guy, Thoughtful Faith, has been trying to goad both you and I into debates with propositions that are very specifically worded to try and put gave, give him an edge. But also, he comes from a very small platform, uh, shows how bad a thinker he is constantly and demands only conversation in the form of us platforming him as our equal. 
Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to put people on and give them time. And, you know, on AXP, we had the, you know, the one minute clock thing. We could do something like that. That was my, you know, in any case, there, there are similar things that could happen. I got offered a debate uh, just the other day. And uh, I'm not going to say who it was, but it's someone I've debated before. And they, there's a third party who's trying to arrange a debate between us. And someone, and, and he suggested, this Christian apologist, suggested that we debate the topic, um, let's see, let me look, make sure I want to I sure. word this right. Um, up for discussion on whether Christianity is intellectually respectable. And my response was, I don't know what he means by intellectually respectable, which I guess could be the key point. If you could get a definition of that, I'll check my schedule. And what he came back to was this. Chris, is Christianity an intellectually respectable religion or worldview such that an educated person can be an orthodox Christian and pursue meaningful integration between their religion and the rest of their beliefs in an intellectually satisfying manner? Yeah. And I said, yeah, that's a terrible debate topic. His topic distills to, can an educated person be an orthodox Christian and still be intellectually satisfied in an attempt to explore how their religion interacts with other beliefs? My answer to that question is yes. That's what he wants to defend. Of course, an educated person can be an orthodox Christian, and they might be intellectually satisfied in exploring how their religion relates to other beliefs. I, I wouldn't be. Um, but it's like, this. you can distill this topic down further to, is it possible for someone to be educated, intelligent, orthodox Christian, and satisfied with their perspective on the world? Yeah, it absolutely yeah. is. And so he went back to see if, can we get a different topic? And the one that came back was, can one reasonably believe the violent Bible is revealed by God? And my reply was, no thanks. He's injecting irrelevant points. I don't yeah. think it's reasonable to believe that the Bible is revealed by God, but that's not conditioned on its violent views or on God's claimed benevolence. Right. Um, anyone working that hard to defend a very narrow point has missed the point. And so that person yeah. not going to be a good fit for me. For yeah, and Jacob does. It, the guy's name is Jacob, Thoughtful Faith, does similar stuff. But his excuse for why he'll never call the show, despite the fact that, again, there is no benefit to us platforming him, but he wants to be platformed as, as our equals, uh, uh, is uh, that his father ran a radio show that does call in portions. It basically has his list of, which means you can't do this and you do do this. And, this. and so, Jacob, I do want to say, I'm sorry your father was a hack of a radio show host and wouldn't engage his audience in good faith. But here we will do that. So and to that end, we'll begin with our first theist call of the day. There we go. And talk to Will in Florida. Will in Florida, you are on the line. Hey, Will. Will, you there? Will, Will, Will. Okay, we won't talk to Will. We'll put you back in the queue. Let's try taking another call and make sure that this isn't uh, on our end. Leave in Wisconsin or Liev, I don't know. Leave in Wisconsin. You're on the line. Can you hear us all right? I can hear you. Okay, so we're good. Hey, uh, what did you call in about? Oh, okay. Um, so basically my family, most of my family on my mom's side is they're all theists and I'm atheist. Um, and, uh, they are, most of them are like anti-trans, anti-gay, all that. Um, so, and so whenever they say something like that, I try to tell them that that's wrong and tell them why it's wrong. And every time I'm shut down and they tell me, like, you're an idiot for not believing. Um, my grandma, who passed away last year, they'll try to use her to try to um, reconvert me into Christianity. And it's just really hard. So I was wondering if you guys had any, like, advice 
um, to give for that. So you're asking specifically how to deal with your family who are theistic or you're asking something else? Um, yeah, like, like, should I just cut ties with them because it's very stressful or should I try to work it out? Like, I don't know. I'm just kind of fed up to the point where, like, I don't know how much I can handle them because of how, how they try to manipulate me, basically. And have you so far had a discussion with them about, hey, like, we can't be having these conversations if you want to have a relationship with me. If we, if you want to have a relationship with me, these things either need to only happen in very controlled settings we agree to at, ahead of time or not at all. Have you, uh, have you already given that a shot? Um, I have. And um, I tried to tell my aunt, I tried to say, like, we can sit down and have a conversation about that. And she goes, well, I don't want to do that. But then uh, whenever we're in a family setting, she'll uh, um, say something like, oh, your grandma would be disappointed in you for being pro-trans. And what do you do? Do you so, bring up that she just passed the boundaries that she agreed to? Um, yeah, I, I, I try to, but she, I'm the youngest in my family, right? I was the last to be born. So that everyone still treats me as a child and they just don't think that what I think is valid. At the end, I at think the one end of the, the questions I'd ask, one. if somebody says, you know, your grandma would be so disappointed. I think my answer, if somebody said that to me, would be like, first of all, um, I, I don't necessarily agree that grandma would be disappointed, but if she was, why would that be the standard of whether or not I should do something? How many other things have all of us done that grandma might be disappointed by? Yeah. Yeah, Leave. I think the, uh, the, I don't think Matt or I can tell you whether or not it's time to cut your family out of your life. Uh, I think that it is better to have your family in your life if they are willing to abide by a minimum level of boundaries that protect you than it is to not have your family in your life at all. And I'm speaking as a person who generally, I have a couple of my siblings in my life, but my parents aren't, uh, my, my grandparents weren't toward the end of their life. Uh, and, and I would have preferred something that was possible uh, uh, some type of relationship that protected me also than the no relationship at all that it's ended up being uh as far as whether it's time to do that it's going to be you have to assess it in the meantime if people aren't if people are agreeing to boundaries and they're not following them it may be if you want to try it may be uh incumbent on you to now start issuing essentially consequences for that like all right well look we said that you weren't going to do that bound past that boundary. You've done it multiple times. I'm just going to skip the next couple things. I'll see y'all in a week. Right. Or however often that you usually, they expect to see you, you stop showing up uh, uh, to stuff and let them know, like I'm, you know, while you all figure out and take your time, figuring out how you're going to respect these boundaries, I'm going to take a little bit of time away. Uh, and you know, there's, there's tons of different stuff you can try. Of course, this is something that I also think you should probably speak over with a therapist, maybe before, uh, making that decision, but ultimately the decision on whether or not it's time to cut ties with your family can't come from anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And neither of us want to make, you know, nobody wants to pretend that this is an easy situation or that there's an easy answer. It's, it's very much going to be to depend on what you want as boundaries, what you're willing to put up with. Um, there are some people who prioritize, um, their family relationship and their family's feelings to the point where they're willing to take and put up with, you know, much more than I would ever dream of putting up with. And so you, you've got to learn to set those boundaries for yourself, um, on your own. But I can appreciate the fact that you're, you know, the fact that you're thinking about it and talking about it and what may be, um, dealing with what may be difficult 
I, I'm fairly confident that you'll you'll figure out exactly when when the line has been crossed to, to the end. Yeah. All right, leave. Uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right. Are you going to say something? No, I was just saying, all right. I was, I was wrapping up. Anything oh. else before we let you go? Okay. Um, no, I don't thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Sounds good. See ya. All right. We're going to try and bring Will back in. Will in Florida, you are on the line. Will, if you're speaking, we just don't hear you at all. Or, or it's disappointing because Will was muted? listed as a theist. Yeah. And uh, Will th- thinks th- he's discovered an essential message from God in the Torah. Yeah. All right, Will, uh, we're going to drop you. You can try calling back in and seeing if, uh, if you can get back through with audio that works, but we're not going to waste any time on you figuring out why your microphone's not on. Uh, That's so sad. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't understand the structure of this question, so this one interests me. Uh, Kurt in Malta. Kurt, you are on the line. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, happy birthday, Matt. Thank you. All right. So, um, I told uh, the call screener what I wanted to start with. Um, uh, I hope it's okay with you guys if I can get your permission to, because I heard um, last week's call from Helios from Serbia, and I just want to, because the humanist in me kind of wants to extend a helping hand, because I, you know, it sucks the situation that they're in. So um, this is directed towards Helios if um, they're listening in um, as a suggestion and an option if. Um, leaving the country is an option for them. Malta is number one when it comes to LGBTQA um, rights in Europe. We don't, dis- you won't get discriminated um, when it comes to finding a job, um, and the the quality of life here is great. Um, I can personally help help you find a job if you decide to ever do come here. And yeah, I mean, I just want to help out because I know I have a, I have Serbian friends over here and I know what the mentality is and they won't change. So yeah, that's, I mean, don't get me wrong. No one's perfect. No, no country is perfect. There are bigots here too, but sure. it's certainly better over here because, you know, right. um, cool. yeah, and we, we have pride once a year too. And yeah, it's a good time. Sure. Uh, what was the topic you wanted to discuss here with us? So, yeah, sorry, let me get on to my topic. So, nice. basically, um, uh, bad reasons for atheism. Because I've heard Matro Diers say, you can be convinced um, uh, about something, a proposition for good or bad reasons. But I've never specifically um, heard you guys mention what would be what con- would constitute as a bad reason for being an atheist. Since atheism is the default oh. position, does it really matter what the reason would be to be an atheist? You know what I'm, I'm well, saying? Yeah, sure. So the reason you have for being an atheist is irrelevant to whether or not your position is correct, but it's relevant as to whether or not um, you're properly applying skepticism. So bad reasons to be an atheist. Um, one... You got mad at God because he didn't answer your prayer or didn't get you a pony. Because at that point, I don't think you're an atheist. I think you're a pissed off theist um, who's trying to shove it in God's face. But bad reasons to actually be an atheist are if you have accepted uh, and or are promoting fallacious arguments against the existence of God. Like God can't exist because he's self-contradictory or you know any, anything where... There's more work to do to actually demonstrate a problem. Uh, any kind of unfounded right. assertions. Um, apart from that, I mean, there there are a lot of atheists, people who identify as atheists and who don't believe in God, who aren't particularly reasonable, aren't particularly knowledgeable on the subject, and yeah. who, when asked to uh, 
uh, why are you an atheist, are going to give really awful reasons like, oh, well, God's just made up, or you're just a, you're a member of whatever religion you're born into, which, by the way, incredibly likely, um, that's the way, you know, the apple doesn't tend to fall far from the tree, but there are people who have converted to different religions, and there are people who are not still in the religion that they were ostensibly born into. Um, there used to be a notion that I changed my mind on, which was whenever someone would say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not uh, a Christian, for example, I don't believe in God because the Bible is against homosexuality, I'm gay, um, and I did a video on this called, called Y'all Just Want to Sin, specifically saying, you know, in the early days, I wanted anyone who was an atheist to give an intellectually rigorous justification for why they are, including the notion that it's the default position. And then I realized, no, if you're an atheist because Christianity says your fundamental nature is sinful and wrong, that is an unfounded assertion on behalf of Christianity, and rejecting that unfounded assertion is a good enough reason. And so if you want to just be uh, a non-believer because you're gay and you don't think there's anything wrong with that, good for you. I mean, that's a, a, a good reason. I, I, it's one I used to list as a bad reason, but I think it's a perfectly good reason. I think there are times where yeah. people will say, I'm an atheist because, and then the words that come after are used irresponsibly in a lot of ways that uh, then tend to fit the caricature. So I probably still get a little bit annoyed with some of the uh, things that maybe don't annoy Matt anymore. But if somebody says, this isn't an example of one that I think wouldn't annoy Matt, but somebody was like, I don't believe in God because I so-and-so at church did this to me. If you actually meet the meme which is that is sort of a Christian, especially Mormon meme of like people just leave the church because they're mad at somebody at the church or something like that. I don't think that sort of stuff is helpful, right. nor can I say I had a caller who called in last night talking about how like, uh, you know, and then there's all the suffering in the world. And it was like, well, there's nothing. God, whether there's suffering or not, isn't commentary on if there's a God or not. So I wouldn't list that as my reasons of like what reinforces uh, me as an atheist. However, the concept of suffering in the world and, and exploring that concept within the confines of your religion, if you're a Mormon or you're a Christian, and how incoherent it is for, the, for your religion to be true with the amount of suffering in the world, with a God who apparently intervened on a lot of other people's sufferings and then just one day decided to stop ever intervening, uh, I think it's a useful thing that ultimately leads a lot of people to atheism without necessarily wanting people to quick in summary say I'm an atheist because of the suff all the suffering in the world. Right. So, and to piggyback on, on, on what you guys said, and I agree with both of you, and thanks for that. You, you clarified a lot of things. Um, me and my partner are having a kid um, in a couple of weeks. And... Um, Congrats. I don't want... Thanks. I don't want him to be... So, you know how... Theists, like you said, Matt, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So if you're a family atheist, and like Malta is a Catholic country, everyone here is raised basically Catholic, so was I. Um, and I don't want my kid to be an atheist just because me and his mom are atheists. I want him to kind of, um, you know, because if you're a theist because your parents are theists, that's not a good reason to be a theist, right? And yep. I don't want it to apply in the same way towards his atheism. I want him to be an atheist for good reasons, not just because me and his mom are atheists. But the problem is, like I said, Malta is a Catholic country. There's Catholic um, icon um, imagery everywhere. So I kind of want to, you know, get to him before they get to him. Raise him if as a skeptic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's exactly what I plan to do. You know, I'm going to teach him what whatever I learned from you guys because you've been uh, instrumental in that for the last 10 years. And uh yeah, that's that's basically my 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 worry, but yeah. I I completely agree with what Jimmy said. And, and I've always held that 
far more important to teach kids uh, how to think rather than what to think. Yep. And so when you have, when, when you're teaching skepticism, you're essentially doing your best to inoculate kids from irrational thinking. And that's far better. You're not going to end up with a kid who's an atheist for bad reasons when you do that. What you're going to end up with um, is someone that has a good understanding about the nature of evidence, the burden of proof, um, what default positions should be and why, um, and who can uh, engage in conversations on those in a way that the average person who was just taught to be a theist, taught to be an atheist, taught, you know, whatever, um, more than they could reasonably do. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think uh, that's great. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I won't take any more of your time. And uh, have a great have a great day. Good luck, Kurt. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Awesome. Uh, we're going to have to ask how to say this name, I think, at the beginning. But I don't even necessarily want to try. We have a caller from Norway. Uh, caller from Norway, why don't you give us the pronunciation of your name? Well, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's Ingva. Ingva. Awesome. Yeah. Ingva. All right. I'll do my best. Uh, Ingva, what did you want to talk to us about? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I look at myself as a doubting theist. That's kind of how, uh, how I look upon myself. And I have uh, started reading a lot about uh, Islam lately. Uh, and I find the whole notion about um, this life being a test, a very uh, good argument. And I was looking uh, forward to hear what you both think about that aspect of Islam. So I'm curious, what do you mean the argument that all of this is a test? I, I'm aware that there are people who would claim, for example, that the entirety of life is some test that a god is doing to you um but i don't i don't know i mean are you talking to like an informal argument or is that the entirety of what you're talking about well i i find i find it convincing uh, that uh, that is an ar argument that i believe in i can see why? that that uh, that there are why yeah uh, so for example it, it, it for falls. example yeah it, it hang on hang on Hang on. Yeah. If you find it convincing, which God, mm -hmm. what's the test, how do you get it right? Well, I think yeah, Islam is one of the only religion that looks at life as a test. No. Oh, man, no. No? No, literally all the Abrahamic religions do to some degree. But let's just imagine that you're correct. That didn't answer the question. Yeah. Which God, what's the test, what's the right answer? Well, I, I, I see that uh, it solves a lot of my problems. I think it solves the problem of evil. It uh, mm -hmm. solves the problem. Sorry, yeah? Which God, what test, what's the right answer? Uh, as I understand it, uh, I, I look at it as if it is Allah and what tests life and how how we get the, the test right is doing what is uh, I'm, no, uh, no, right? No, 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 no. Okay. okay, we got an answer to which God, Allah. And then you said mm -hmm. which test, life. That's not a test. Mm -hmm. You need to, so life is definitely life. If you think that life is also a test, what is the test? Because what, what is it, what is the goal uh, What that the test is, to tr what is the answer? Ah, okay, yes. So I, I think the goal goal is to, to sh uh, show that you're uh, worthy living in paradise. Okay. That, that's not an answer. Well, I mean, it is, it is, it's a response. If you say the test is to show that you're worthy of living in paradise, 
Yeah. First of all, what reason do you have to think that there's any paradise? And how do you demonstrate that you're worthy? Because you find this, this thing convincing, you find this argument compelling, but what if, what if it's a test to see whether or not you can be reasonable in the face of irrational claims? What if it's a, like a big intelligence test and, and, a, and buying into any religion is an epic failure? Yeah, that uh, is a good question. I, I don't think I have thought about it in that way, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I mean, well, lots of times but, when, we find, yeah. when we find some sort of argument or, or claim compelling, um, it, it's good to ask further questions. And so for me, if somebody says, hey, all of life is a test to see if you're worthy to enter paradise, then my questions mm -hmm. are, which paradise? How do you know there's a paradise? What's, what, what must I do to demonstrate that I'm actually worthy? What is the, the, the correct answer to this test? And what reason do I have to believe that it's true? And what if there's some other test like if, if you find it compelling that life is a test, what if it's a test to find out how gullible you are? What if it's a test to find out, mm. um, you know, whether or not you have, you were born with color vision or decent hearing, or, you know, maybe, maybe those things are criteria. Or if you think that it should be available to everybody, is all of this available to everyone? And so you've found mm. a claim an assertion about life. Um, I don't, I don't understand personally, and maybe, I, I get why people think this, and maybe Jimmy has a different thought on it. Um, I don't view life as a test. I, I'm i not even sure how I could. Um, I certainly agree. Like, for example, um, a someone that I follow and talked about on, on The Hangup has recently been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. I've had open heart surgery um, and a heart attack. There are trials and difficulties in my life and in the life of the people around them, um, both health issues and financial issues and relationship issues. To, to look at that and, and see agency as if all of this was put here as a test, wouldn't that mean that the God in question is just a big asshole who set, who's decided to create people not give them good evidence for his existence, not interact with them in any detectable, verifiable way, not have a conversation with them at all, but just start throwing hurdles up in their life for them to jump through to demonstrate that they're worthy of paradise, but not doing it equitably. So like, you know, I get the hurdle of a heart condition, somebody else gets the hurdle of pancreatic cancer, somebody else gets the hurdle mm. of athlete's foot. How, how mm. is that remotely a fair test? Yeah, now that uh, that is a good question. Uh, I guess for me per, per, per personally, I, I do think it's kind of it it uh, it's a little like you said. It it maybe talks to my my ego a little. I don't know. Maybe that that one of the aspects of it but i when i look when i look uh, uh, on uh, all the different the religions i i find it most compelling i don't know why exactly other than that it it solves a lot of other problems in 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 my eye especially the the it, problem of evil like why for example evil exists it sounds like it solves the problems that you've li you have a list of questions that mm -hmm. you think it answers while what Matt's just done with you is revealed it creates a bunch of new questions that you're comfortably annoying I, or ignoring I think it's actually pretty self-aware mm -hmm. of you to acknowledge that maybe there is ego as a part of it because I think that that's true not not in a degrading way I think that you put a lot no, of no. significance in the in the question why is there evil as though it must have some large existential answer besides the fact mm -hmm. that humans are imperfect. Our psychology varies. Uh, we're often very selfish. Uh, and, and mm -hmm. also culturally we have terrible norms reinforced and we're a developing species like, like you would expect us to be. And so I think you do just have this set of like, here are some questions and unanswer proven or not, 
and in this case not, feels better to me than no answer or an I don't know answer or a scary answer. Mm -hmm. Like evil exists because many people are evil. You want you mm. almost want to separate that out and and create some existential thing that that where evil is going to get conquered like we're all living in Lord of the Rings or something. Uh, uh, I think it's I think you're you're romanticizing and fantasizing something because at the end of the day, while you two were discussing whether or not the premises made any sense, I don't even know why would why are you starting with there is a God and the explanation of how he's doing this is a test because a test itself doesn't necessitate a God either. You could say this life is a test and there are people observing in the way that someone is doing a, a scientific test and that there's no rewards, mm -hmm. that there's no, just there being a test wouldn't be a proof of God. We have no proof of a test, but we certainly could be in some sort of Truman show and being tested in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, doesn't seem remotely likely. So what, what about somebody says, this life is a test, and apparently you only heard that from Muslims, even though it's literally the core of Christianity, Mormonism, parts of Judaism. Uh, what about that phrase proves to you there's a God? Just that it, and you feel like it means you no longer have to ask some questions you're uncomfortable with? Uh, I guess it solves the problem I am uncomfortable with. doesn't solve. Because solve would mean you could well so something that is solved has a demonstration of basically proof. There's it doesn't solve it. It right. just puts an answer there. You can now and move I'm on and pretend that it's true. In the same way that people are in denial about a lot of things, like the death of their loved ones, utilizing religion. But when when you say other uh, Abrahamic uh, religions also believe that it's a test, I do uh, agree. To a certain point, but uh, if we look at, for, for example, Christianity, the, the answer is that the, you you get your uh, uh, salvation to through Jesus Christ. In uh, in the Islamic religion, it's um, more uh, tangible and a more uh, complete thing you have to do. For example, you actually have to say you're sorry. To the people that you sin against. No, to the Muslims that you sin against. First of all, uh, right. you don't yeah. have to be sorry to an infidel. But beyond that, uh, you're you're cherry picking. There are sects of Christianity that believe that faith without works is dead. Is the phrase that you you faith in Jesus mm. Christ is how you uh, first get into the testing facility, and then you have to do the work to be worthy of heaven, or in the case of my religious tradition, uh, get into one of the tiers of heaven. Uh, so no, mm. that's, again, not exclusive to, in fact, the one that's the most compassionate is probably uh, versions of Judaism, where it's sort of like, nobody's going to be perfect. We don't have a concept of hell. When you die, if there's an afterlife, it's just sort of like a, hey, that's what you did with your life. There were the lessons that you were supposed to learn. If you didn't learn them, maybe you'll learn them now, but we don't even know if there's an afterlife. Like that's probably the most compassionate mm. version of an Abrahamic, this life is a test I've heard of. And there's still no reason mm. to believe it. Again, why is mm. any of this making you believe in a God in the first place? Well, like I said, it's it's mostly the problem with evil that I, I find it a compelling answer to. With Express God. the problem of evil to us, because I've only put words in your mouth so far on it. Well, uh, that the evil at, uh, at all exists, that people are evil, I do think that there needs to be consequences for things like that. I don't, I don't see... Uh, I, I, it, it maybe this will sound a, a little childish, but but I want pe people to be punished for what I do. Mm -hmm. Me too. Should I then create yeah. fantasies of their eternal punishment or some ethereal punishment based on the fact that I want it to be true? Is something true because we want it to be true? No. Okay. So so. You're talking to two skeptics. We wait to believe something until there's a good reason. Mm. 
Are you saying you're comfortable with believing things before there's a good reason? Uh, I guess so, yes. Are you really... Are, okay, so now that you're saying that out loud and you're acknowledging it, are you looking to continue your life with such an admission? Or are you saying... You've done that to this point, no, and now you're recognizing you shouldn't have. Yes. Okay, it's, good. It's, that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and there was a... Go on. There was a question that came up in chat, which is uh, common when we start talking about trials and tests and all this. And somebody was like, why would God need to test you? Because God already knows the answer. Um, mm. That's not, in, in a biblical sense or in a Quranic sense, uh, that's not what tests are. They're not... It's not like God's giving you a test so that he can discover whether or not you're worthy or they can discover whether or not you're worthy. No. God's giving a test to benefit you so that you know you're not worthy mm -hmm. and strive to do it. It's, it's the whatever, excuse me, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger type thing where God's going to keep putting these obstacles in your path because you need those in order to become worthy of entering paradise or to see that you're never going to be worthy on your own and you're going to reach out to God or whatever Whatever the eschatology is um, to, to determine, or the soteriology to let you know um, what your path to salvation is. But in this case, yeah. to me, the notion that it's all a test basically means you've got some kind of God up there who's just fucking with people um, <laughs> in order to help them reach some criteria that he's responsible for setting, you know. So you ask yourself, is mm -hmm. there a paradise or a hell or damnation or whatever else? Do you have any good reason to think that's true? No, but let's just assume that there is. The next thing is, how do I tell wh which one of those I get to go to after I'm dead? Well, that's the entire field of, of soteriology, of salvation, of what, what, what's, what must one do to be saved? And so with mm -hmm. the life is a test mentality, you're back to what I said before. You've essentially got a God who doesn't interact with people, doesn't give them clear evidence, doesn't communicate with them. And how do you even know what its criteria is going to be for determining your salvation? You can't just say, well, it says so in the book, because now you've got to explain why you're going to trust that book over some other book. And why, if God's mm. given you a clear message in a book, why wouldn't God just give you the clear message in person? Um, is mm. that impossible? Uh, one, one question that I'm going to start asking way more often is on someone's particular God model, what evidence is their God incapable of presenting? Not unwilling, but incapable. What kind of evidence could your God not do? Because could your God reveal himself completely to everybody in the universe all at once? Because if your answer is yes, and he hasn't done it, then your God is a dick who is judging people undeservedly. The criteria, once he starts playing favorites, um, all, all of that gets to, hey, there's no reason for us to believe any of this. Hmm. Yeah, I, I thank you both uh, for getting me to think about things I, I haven't really thought about. That's, that's why I like talking to people. Before the With, call, uh, you, uh, at the beginning of the yeah. call, you said you were a doubting theist. And I'm just curious because it sounds like you're saying you were just recently exposed to this Islamic concept. What was your theism yeah. defined as before? What sort of theist were you? I, I just, uh, uh, I would say I was a theist, that I just believed that there was a God that has created doubting and went away. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, we can unpack that if you want, but we, we we don't have to. Deism is honestly one of the most boring conversations, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the same thing I already told you. Do you believe things before you have a good reason or after? Uh, and right. deism's, deism's more of a like, oh, wouldn't it be nice proposition than one anyone should take as a... Uh, as, as may, I, may I ask a question? Sure. Uh, uh, so when it comes to, for example, the problem of evil, I think that's like, I, I, I would say that's a cornerstone in, in my doubting ages. <laughs> uh, but but how, how do you solve the problem of evil in an atheist, from an atheist point of view? 
to be clear well the problem of evil go ahead i was gonna say to be clear you said mm. your problem of evil was that you want people to have consequences for being evil and you want those mm -hmm. to be in some way dished out after we die or something, right? Is that the problem you're saying, mm -hmm. or is there a different? Because problem of evil doesn't usually yeah, mean that to Matt. Yeah, it exists in the in in the first place. Okay, so you specifically mm -hmm. why evil exists in the first place? All right, sorry for interrupting, Matt. I just mm -hmm. wanted to get a clarification. Yeah. That's so. The problem of evil in philosophical circles has a very specific meaning. And that is, why is there evil if there's a good God who exists and is capable of preventing or stopping this evil? When you say, how do you solve the problem of evil with atheism? It goes away. Because if there is no God, then there is no problem of evil. Because there's no benevolent God who could be fixing it. What you have is a state of affairs where people are looking around going, gosh, this world seems like it's mighty unfair, doesn't really care about me um includes some bad things and the answer to that is yes the universe doesn't give a flying fuck about you the notion that there's a god up there who does is fantasy the notion mm. that there's a god up there who can do good things and and just chooses not to is a is a slight against any god that would have existed but mm. okay thank you both Sure. Thank you. I think I've already say it for me one more time. Was it Ingva? Ingva? Ingva, yeah. Ingva. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Ingva. So thank you. Bye bye. I'm gonna be rude. Go for it. Because we're doing a four hour show. Yeah. And and my lovely partner just showed up with um some really bad food for me. Taco Bell. Oh okay. and so I'm gonna sit here. I'm going to I'm going to make all kinds of noise that irritates you with the bag right now. <laughs> Hate but it. in just a second, I'm going to mute and I'm going to sit here and pound some tacos for this long show. It's only fair. I did it on my birthday as well. Uh, I'm trying to remember what they said. That, that's there, what made it OK. There was someone in the chat who was like pretty rude to eat wings on air and I or in the comments. And I was just like, you forgot about the pizza. I also ate pizza. It wasn't just wings. It was wings and pizza. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into another call. I'm just posting to Instagram. It, it, it is clear that, um, it's very interesting to me because the notification system is what goes out, right? It is clear to me though, that there are many people who ritualistically understand that this show usually starts at 3 PM because we have a different viewership, uh, a different number of people watching, uh, right so far, uh, as we started two hours early, but uh, so for the moment, we're going to give one that isn't the next one that was going to line up is directed to Matt. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that one. Uh, and yeah. also there's something to clear up here. Go on. Yes. I live in Austin, Texas, home of some of the best food on the planet, including some of the best Mexican food. And yes, I'm eating Taco Bell. This does not happen very often. This is a desperate, we've been working with snakes all day. Let's get something quick and easy. Yeah. Uh, also, sometimes you just crave the consistency of what you crave. Look, I am very uh, almost snobby about pizza, but every now and then I chow down a Totino's. I, I just have that, that the memory, the taste of that thing you had as a kid that the only thing they've changed about Totino's since I was a kid was the shape. It used to be a circle. Now it's a square. And otherwise it tastes exactly the same. Uh, by the way, turning it into a square for college kids who just have a little toaster oven was genius. Br oh, no notes. Anyway, the, we are talking. Everybody in chat, I just got three Taco Supremes. That's it. And they're Excellent. soft. Excellent. We are talking to uh, Nick in Tennessee. Nick, you are on the line. Hey, y'all. Hey. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon to you Hello. as well. Um, my question is, essentially, uh, is it even conceptually possible to prove the supernatural? Um, <clears throat> like, if, if the supernatural is, by definition, the set of things that are outside of our universe or behave in accordance to other laws, other systems made of other materials that are like can't be perceived by any of the stuff that we have or an engineer um 
is there ever would there ever be a way to prove that? that so you asked anything? you asked if it was conceptually yeah. possible, and so for that, I'm going to say there's nothing logically impossible about something beyond nature, and so I have no idea if if the supernatural exists. I have no idea what the likelihood is in reality of empirically demonstrating the supernatural. I don't know what mechanism that is. But the mere fact that there's a proposition that there's something beyond nature, um, I'm, not I, I'm, I'm not aware of any defeater that shows that that is logically impossible. Uh, it may be uh, materially impossible, but I'm not aware of anything that shows it's logically impossible. And so on that, on the grounds of, yes, possibility must be demonstrated and impossibility must be demonstrated, but logical possibility is such that generally we assume something is logically possible unless there's a demonstration that it's logically impossible, incoherent, contradictory, etc. And so while the supernatural or, or claims about the supernatural make, um, assert things that are contradictory to nature, I'm not aware of any, any demonstration that it's logically impossible. Yeah, I'd also say there's an obvious utility in acting as though it's going to be something that we could at least uh, uh, get to a point of being able to call it something like we call dark matter, where you're you're still looking for explanations that prior were called uh, supernatural things. And, you know, if the supernatural exists, maybe we do get to a day where it's like, here's a list of things that we have all the science in the world we're super good at and we just still can't do this thing. I just suspect it isn't going to happen. Uh, it's, it's useful to engage the discovery at times of something supernatural. But then also, when we're talking about testing the supernatural, because this, the, the challenge that's coming up often or when people are like, well, it's supernatural, so it inherently can't be, or uh, whatever, is usually them making claims about a statement of scripture that if it were true, whether you could detect the supernatural entity itself, its impact would have tremendous natural consequences. So you talk about something like uh, the, the, the supernatural behavior of parting the Red Sea uh, or, or many, other, many other things. Uh, uh, the, you know, ancient Jews making all, all the way to America and then having their skin color cursed. There are ginormous natural impacts sort of side effects of these supernatural claims, and those can be tested. And so generally, when a person is asking like, well, what's even the point? If you can't test it, why challenge it? Because it's not entirely unchallengeable unto itself. It's just the specific ghost man that can have every possible quality you need it to have. Or last night, what we came up with, which was the troll fairy hybrid with the power of penis farts that create universes. It was rather crass, but I had a good time. It was like four hours into the show. Uh, yeah, it, it's when you can just create the qualities on the fly, you're not going to be able to test some supernatural claim like that. But when you make claims about the way that supernatural entity interacted with the natural world, suddenly we do have things to test. Yeah, and, and I want to get back I'm, to Nick. I don't want to dogpile 23 answers on here, but I was just thinking of something and somebody in chat just did the thing that I need to respond to. Anyone who is asserting that the supernatural is not real or cannot be real is making a claim that they have falsified what is apparently currently unfalsifiable. And yeah. that is irrational, which is why I'm willing to say, you know, on, on the front of logical possibility, I, I can't rule out the supernatural. And I don't begin by ruling it out. It's just that if somebody makes a claim that something is supernatural in, in nature, they have and they have to demonstrate that they have the bird of proof. Yes. Go on, Nick. It's back to you with giving you the oh, speech ball back. Um, so to, uh, if I understood correctly, and I'll listen back to this um, later. I'm a tad pressed for time, and I don't want to take up too much of y'all's. It's all good. But Matt's answer seemed to seem to be potentially that. Yes, it's conceptually possible, but that doesn't mean that it's, um, or, or it's just because it's not logically impossible doesn't mean that we should believe in it or anything else, whatever. Um, and your 
answer was more that, um, like, when it can have whatever traits, if it's outside of um, whatnot, then we can't test it. We can't really define it or work with it. But if it interacts with our world in some way, then we can. And I'm not sure I agree with that last part. Okay. Um, On what base? So, Nick, if, if, if I claim that the Red Sea was parted and that hundreds of thousands of people entered the Red Sea uh, and they were followed then by an army and that the Red Sea closed on the army, are there tests, is there evidence I can go look for of that supernatural, the supernatural claim being that the Red Sea was parted and held by supernatural forces? Can I go and at least check? Can I go look for evidence of the basic physical elements of that, which are in the natural world? For that claim, yes. Okay. So what would a claim be that where something does interact with the, uh, uh, the natural world that would be, I'm not saying, by the way, that everything is testable after the fact, but that wouldn't have been detectable by something. Because, you know, so for example, when people say they saw a ghost, and they were actually experiencing sleep paralysis, there's not really a way to test if a person was in sleep paralysis. But there are ways to test if people are in sleep paralysis, and you could potentially test if they go into it again under certain conditions. Oh. What are, oh, what's yes. your well, example of something agree. that escapes testability if it's affecting the natural world? Well, I think my, um, my uh, disagreement is for like historical events. Like if something is going on now, then yes, we should be able to see it to report. I gave it you Moses whatever. parting the Red Sea. Right. Yeah, that would be, but that would be a historical event that would have left evidence. Something mm -hmm. like uh, God feeding the Israelites with manna from heaven wouldn't have. So it would have been there, testable be, at the time. I get what you're saying time, as a historical yes. event. You still have physical properties that are happening, and you still have the potential of being able to find, you know, some leftover mana or some leftover traces of the event and stuff. That does happen, but it doesn't always happen. The, the things that it is affecting in the natural world, though, are things that are physically happening and under the right circumstances, if you had the right equipment at the right time, are testable. Whether or not as an individual, as a practical matter, you can go test them now in the, at the, uh, on the other side of it doesn't make those things untestable, sort of yeah. existentially. So, and your clarification there was that if you had the right equipment in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. But the supernatural events depicted throughout history have, at least in what little bit that I know, been largely like at the God's discretion or unpredictable, or whenever it happens, it happens. And, and I, I fully realize that most, the, the vast majority of like mythological claims are probably just retellings of big dramatic events that happened in a local area that got blew out of proportion over time. So I'm not trying to say that gods are real or, or any of this, but if like, imagine a like we're playing the sims right i am effectively god to the characters in that game i can uh move through time i can see the, the whole world at once or zoom in on one person i can know intimate things sure we, we, we know the sims let's, let's uh, get to the point a little bit quicker if you don't mind nick yeah, okay sorry um so if i feed one move one do something to one they couldn't prove like that necessarily like how they got there what happened the same would be true for us. If if a god does something in a place to somebody, and and doesn't leave, like doesn't bother to leave evidence of that interaction, um, like how could that person ever prove it? Like if if a supernatural manifestation happened in a room with the the, the one hundred most uh, we, you've already given examples. We don't need skeptical. more metaphors. Matt and I's brains are perfectly capable of engaging the metaphors you got so far. In the, in the example right, you it. gave, there would be no reason for the Sims to posit a god. First of all, Sims can't posit a god. So how have those Sims come up with the solution of a god in the first place if it did not interact with their natural world in a way that was observable? You're talking about a hiding god. 
who just spends all of his time going, I'm going to go do something and then make sure nobody finds out about it. Why would you suspect that in the first place? And as a person, you call yourself an atheist. I don't know if you're a skeptic. It sounds like you're listing examples of things that people shouldn't believe in, but technically I don't have a way to say didn't happen, but there's no good reason to believe them. So I shouldn't accept that they did, but I technically can't say that they didn't which Matt's already done it. Technically, I can't say that the supernatural doesn't exist. It doesn't turn Matt into a believer of the supernatural. So what is the utility of what you think you're presenting as a question here? Well, a lot of theists believe that they receive utility from their beliefs. from uh, Because of the ways in which the their beliefs interact with God. the natural world, not because of the way in which they act supernaturally. Even the people who think they get comfort from their God... This is the, I've, I hope you've heard the story I've given in the past of the God that used to relieve me of my pooping pain. Uh, right. And then we actually test it and we find out, no, this, the most likely situation and answer wasn't that for those years I was Mormon and praying, it was actually God answering those prayers. And then after the fact, it was a different natural answer because God wouldn't have that interest anymore. Uh, you're, 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 your original hypothesis of things you can't test or change goes out the, the window when you're talking about people who believe for the ways in which they think their God interacts with the natural world, and that shouldn't be accepted until there is adequate reason to believe it, and an attempt to test it or come up with alternative answers which have a higher likelihood at least to be entertained that should be done. That's what a person with a working mind w wanting to only believe in true things should do. There's, a, there's been a lot of questions in chat tied to all this, not to derail from Nick, but there are people who are, are taking the standard approach of, well, if we detect it or if we can demonstrate it, then doesn't that mean that it's natural? No, here's the thing. Or if somebody said, if the supernatural exists, then doesn't that make it natural? No. If the supernatural exists, then by definition, it's supernatural. It is beyond natural. The fact that we don't currently have a mechanism to test or identify supernatural uh, items or, or causation <clears throat> doesn't mean that we are. That will always be the case. Maybe tomorrow somebody comes up with a supernatural detector, and what and, and they're going to need to demonstrate the efficacy of it. Do I think that's likely to happen? No. But not only do I not believe that there's anything supernatural, I actively believe there isn't anything supernatural. But the, the distinction people need to make is that here's an unknown, some, some apparent effect, and we don't know what the cause is, you know. And so someone will assert a supernatural cause. It's entirely, uh, oh, Great argument, McCreenan. Call in and demonstrate that I'm wrong, because uh, that'll be more fun for me to walk through you that way than doing it while you're in chat, just asserting. Do it. If if somebody dem if somebody claims the cause of this here is supernatural, they then have to demonstrate it. They have to adopt the burden of proof and show that in fact the cause is supernatural and how they know it's supernatural. The fact that we can't do that right now doesn't mean that there's nothing supernatural, and it doesn't mean that any cause that we discover is necessarily natural. Do I think that's most likely? You bet. Um, but the fact is, if if the supernatural exists, need a way to, to verify that, then you need a way to verify that the supernatural can interact with reality, manifest in reality, in a detectable way. And how do you show, verify that you're actually detecting it correctly? But it could be that cases, uh, causes that are proposed to be supernatural turn out to be natural things that we just didn't understand. But that isn't necessarily the case. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I don't think that was the point that I was trying to make. So that was like addressed to somebody in chat. Um, and I think I've got to go anyway. So, uh, thank y'all for the time. Yeah, no worries. Um, sure. and, uh, have a great, uh, have a great day. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. All right. Bye. Mary in Florida, you're on the line. Hey, how are you doing? Just fine. How are you? I'm good. Um, 
I wanted to talk with Matt about um, a couple of debates he's had recently with uh, Muslims. Sure. Um, uh, the perfect Darwa, Darwa, was whatever his name was, um, he seems to be, um, I think you call him an outlier on the Islam because the other Muslims totally disagree with him. And is he trying to put a soft spin on it so it doesn't seem so bad? I don't know. Uh, I think he may genuinely, I I have no reason to think that he doesn't genuinely believe what he says. I don't need to, I don't need to investigate what somebody's motivations are for why they say something. So maybe he's trying to put a softer spin on it. Maybe he's convinced that he's actually correct. Uh, I'm going to have to act as if he thinks he's correct. And in the end, I can only interact with or only address the actual claims and evidence that he presents. Yeah. And um, did you happen to watch um, Aaron's debate with Hussein a couple of weeks ago? And I think you're debating him soon at debate. I think I may be debating him at, yeah, yeah. I haven't watched that debate. Do you plan to watch it? No. Okay. Um, it, It was interesting. Um, toward the end and in, in the uh, question and answer part, um, most of the questions were from atheists and questions about, you know, being able to beat your wife and and if, if they refuse you sex, you're supposed to be able to beat them. And he said, well, yeah. you can give them a light slap. And But as the questions went on and you could see Hussein's because all the questions were about the atrocities of the Islamic teachings. And as the d- debate went on, you could see him just start to body language crumble, head in his hand, you know. <laughs> and I laughed at Arn because he, w- he just sat back and drank his beer and he goes, yeah, it's pretty hard to uh, defend the indefensible, isn't it? You know. And, yeah. um, it was it was great watching that, but um, I look forward to seeing you debate uh, for you to debate him. Do you, do you remember what the topic's going to be for for you and Hussein? I think it's is, is, it, is, is Islam it, true? Is Islam true, or is Islam reasonable, or something like that? Oh, okay. And um, I have not seen anything from AP lately. Is he doing okay? I like to watch his stuff, but he doesn't. Apostate prophet? Yes. I I haven't I heard know. from him in ages. All I ever see from him is him running around with David Wood, um, the Christian sociopath, um, tag teaming, yeah. doing Muslim debates together. And I'm like, politics makes for strange yeah. bedfellows because I don't need to do anything to prop up David Wood or anybody else. And I think he may have also said some transphobic stuff, but I don't know. I, I don't. I don't have oh, time to okay. pay attention to everybody. Aaron's a good friend of mine. I haven't watched his debate with the guy that I'm going to be debating next month. Um, I may or may not watch it before then, and, and it's partly because what happened at that debate may not, in fact, be relevant at all to yeah. to my debate. Mary, do you have any? I don't want to prepare uh, for the wrong thing. Do you have any questions more yeah. for Matt, or a little more on topic? We're maybe going to not do a, any questions on what other de- people are out there doing debates and stuff. Oh, okay. No, just um, just cool. curious, and I'm looking forward to debate con three. And um, yeah, no worries. Have a have a great birthday. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> all right. All right, Matt. I'm going to put you on with somebody else, and then I need to uh, I need to excuse myself for a couple of minutes. But uh, in the meantime, you also have the obviously you've got the call in thing too. So you're welcome to. Uh, yep. Pick one if you prefer. I kind of want to engage the one on line 18. So uh, while others are screening, I'm going to give you line 21 if that's good with you. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. By the way, there's a bunch of questions coming in chat that I can't keep up with everything else. Um, But yeah. Yeah. Uh, By the way, the typical way, if you want your question addressed, we are going to read Super Chats at the end of today's show. uh, Any Super Chat of $10 or more. So uh, uh, give that a shot. But 
for the moment, we have Jessica from Utah, uh, who is calling back uh, somewhat salaciously with the topic of a god hall. So, Jessica, you are on the line. <laughs> yeah, Hello, I, Jimmy I'm, and Matt. Uh, I'm exercising caution. How are you, Jessica? I'm doing very well, Matt. Thank you. How are you? I'm all right. I'm good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, Jimmy, do you recall? Um, I was the caller that the audio cut out on my end like halfway through and, and I hung up and and you're asking a call back. Do you remember that one? It was like a month or two ago. Hello? Uh, Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy has stepped away. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, did he did he kind of give you a preface of what had occurred prior, or, or did he not do that? Nope, just tossed me in, and um, although you you had evidently in the in the call screening thing, I can see that you had the argument for God from universal determinism. But today it's about Jessica's God hole, and so go ahead with whatever you got. Yeah, so um, to kind of preface, I, I I'm somebody who subscribes to universal determinism as a philosophy. I do believe that that things are somewhat orchestrated. That that people think they're making, you know, decisions and that they're in control of their lives, but generally people are kind of carried by the, <laughs> the, the, the combination of the genetics and their experience. And uh, I'd kind of been getting into Taoism and I'd kind of thought that maybe Taoism was a God concept that I could accept. And I was super down sure. with that. And I was like, I think I might be a theist. And so I was calling, you know, people, atheist experts to say, does this make me a theist? And, and uh, Jimmy was like, well, where does your desire to believe in a God come from? And uh, that's when we dropped off. And I have had time to analyze since then. And I think that my God belief came from after. So I left Mormonism. Um, and after leaving Mormonism, there was a massive, it felt like there was a loss because Mormonism was the place I put all my spiritual emotions and feelings and such into that. And when I became an atheist, it felt like I wasn't allowed to experience those things anymore because they were over religious, spiritual BS. It's not real and you can't, you know, and so that stuff got shut down and it was a p thing that I was missing. And I'd searched everywhere for a religion I could believe in and I couldn't find one until I ran into Taoism and it kind of lined up with my beliefs in universal determinism. And I was like, man, this is it. I got a God belief. And then my mom <laughs> My mom is very religious, and she was, she's, I, I was talking to her, and she was going, well, you know, I am, like, uh, she she's part of, like, the higher-ups in, like, it's called Al-Anon, it's kind of a sister group to AA, and I expressed that I think it's problematic that AA compels a God belief on people. In order for them to believe that they have a chance at recovery, they have to accept a God belief. And we really got into it. And we argued quite a bit on that. And at the end of that, she made me an atheist again, where I was like, you know what? I'm not being compelled by AA to have a God belief. These spiritual feelings and experiences don't require a God belief. And yeah. there are atheists out there who are compelled to have a God belief just so that they can look good in court so they can pass their parole and that's fucked up, and I refuse well, to. Well, uh, <laughs> they're, they're compelled to. They're compelled to act as if they have a God belief, but that doesn't mean they have a God belief. Right, right. No, that exactly. And yeah, and I was just livid at the at the because my mom she was doing the apologetics of why it's okay to force people <laughs> to at the minimum pretend to have a God belief, and I was absolutely incensed by that. And so the, the long and short of it is, my mom made me an atheist again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, if my mom was talking about forcing people to act as if they have a belief, I would say, why on earth are you in favor of forcing people to lie? Yeah, and she would it, say, well, she's, she's like, well, well they're not, they don't have to lie. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just wondering, isn't lying bad? And if you're you're saying that it's worth it to force people to say they believe something that they don't believe, then you are forcing people to lie. Yeah, and... So, so, so her thing was, she said, well, you don't have to have 
like a God God. It's just a higher power. And some people's higher power can be a light switch because it turns on lights and they can't do that. So that's a higher power than them. And that just ran, that, that smelled of total bullshit to me. I was like, mm, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. That's think ridiculous. Worshiping a light. That, switch is, is, gonna, that is absolutely yeah. ridiculous because first of all, who designed the light switch? Who installed the light switch and who's the one that flipped the light switch? How is it, how is a light or a light switch a higher power if I'm the one that's controlling it? God, I had the, the same response. And so the pushback, pushback, and she kept saying, it's not a God belief, it's just a higher power. It can be whatever you want. It could be lightning because lightning's more powerful than you or whatever. And it just, uh, it, it, I was with it because I'm like, you are in a position as somebody who's a higher up in this, because she's going to like national conferences, I'm like, you could propose, hey guys, maybe we stop compelling people to have a God belief if they have one, and they think that helps them get off of drugs, great. But maybe we don't compel this anymore. And she she was livid and would not, would not hear a, a minute more of me saying, maybe don't force people to at least pretend <laughs> to, to not have a God belief. And later she came back with, if people can't imagine a God belief, Maybe that's why they're an addict in the first place, which, you know, <laughs> I think that might have been the moment wow. I was like, oh, I'm an atheist again, because fuck you. Maybe they, they had a mom who smugly thought that she understood other people's psychology and the manner of addiction, and that drove them to drink. Maybe that's that there was a real answer yeah. there. I mean, if your mom's just going to make up no shit kidding. that's going to be the, the cause, okay, maybe they had a mom that, you know, <laughs> didn't understand stuff, and it drove them to drink. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, no longer uh, oh, yeah, wanting no. to claim the title theist. So I think I, I'm, I'm like, you know, I think the universe still is deterministic. I think my mom. So to preface, my mom married two two addicts, divorced one, remarried again, happened to marry a second addict. One was alcohol, one was pills. And I'm like, you know what? She is uh, in the position she is where she believes very strongly that you have to have theism to get off of drugs and alcohol because she's. She's really, that's where she's planted her flag. She's planted her flag in theism and the belief in those things. And it is the only way she can feel safe and secure. And I, I'm like, all right, that's, that's who you are and where you're at. And you couldn't have been anywhere else. I can't hate you for it, but I don't identify no. as a theist at this point. And I don't necessarily want to. I'm like, God, what a trap. What a trap it is to be in that position. It's so strange to be in this kind of, Hey, um, I'm convinced the only way you can beat a substance addiction is with a God. Well, that's a completely separate issue from whether or not there is a God, or you have good reason to believe it, or whatever else. Um, and so when somebody makes a claim like that, and it's happening in, even in chat with regard to supernatural, so I might be able to tie two things together. Um, is it possible that what someone claims to be a supernatural cause is natural? Sure. You have to demonstrate that. Yeah. And so, like, if, if I'm an addict and I recover, um, now I get it. There's a model under which you don't, you're always an addict. You're never going to recover, um, but you're just going to stop using. But if, in fact, I stop using or I recover or whatever else, in a way that someone wants to credit uh, the cause of that with a God, how do they do that? How do they show that it was a God that fundamentally changed me? How do they demonstrate that supernatural causation? Um, because I'm not aware of a way to do it. Yeah. And the, the way that the call ended with my mother, that whole conversation ended was she said, because I, I came back with, look, mom, I, I'm familiar with, like, I, I know of Owen, Owen Morgan and tells Hale, he, he talks about how he was addicted to cocaine, I believe, and got off of that. And I, or uh, no illusions, or I've heard Jimmy talk about too, like a lot of substance uh, addiction that they have recovered from without God. Like, I'm aware of many atheists who've recovered from addiction without God. She goes, oh, well, maybe they were never addicts in the first place. I said, you realize that's the no two Scots and fallacy, right, Mom? And she goes, I'm not having this conversation and hung up. <laughs> I was just shocked. by yeah. like, I just told, I gave you examples that contradict your belief. You refuse to accept that they exist. I, the conversation, I can't move, there's no productive conversation to be had there. <laughs> yep. It's so I have I have parents who are just admittedly closed-minded. Um, yeah. They 
aren't aren't even open to the notion that a god might not exist. There's there's zero possibility in their mind um, that they could be wrong about yeah. God. In, in much the same way that I've yeah. debated Ray Comfort, and Ray Ray talked about that. He, he said it'd be easier for you to prove that his wife doesn't exist than that God doesn't exist. And I would yeah. agree. It would be easier to prove that his wife doesn't exist and that God doesn't exist because God's unfalsifiable. His wife, on the other hand, uh, right. is is potentially a falsifiable proposition. We have to dig in a little further. Right. But the the frustrations right. that you're having with your mom, um, at this point, it's no longer about what's demonstrable or what label you use or anything else. It's about is there a way to have conversations with your mom to get her to acknowledge um, what what at least minimally what the rational position is like she might believe in a god you don't um whether or not there's a way to demonstrate it is you know up in the air whether or not there'll ever be a way to demonstrate it but at a minimum if she's like i think the only way that you can recover from addiction is with a god then if you were to show her someone who is a lifelong atheist who has beaten their substance addiction problem through there's SOS, which is a secular sobriety service. There's, there's other things like that. Are, are they just, is God fixing them and they just don't know it? Because if God then will fix people, whether they reach out to him or not, whether they believe in him or not, whether they do anything to ask for this or not, then you now have a situation where here's five people, two of them, believe in the right God, two of them believe in the wrong God, one of them doesn't believe in any God, and they're all addicts, and um, of the ones that believed in the right God, we'll say one asked God for help, of the ones that believe in the wrong God, let's say one asked God for help, and the atheist didn't ask anybody for help. And if the evidence shows that any one of the five of those could wind up beating their substance abuse problem, how could you ever tell, A, whether or not a God helped, and B, that it only works if a god helps yeah yeah i think that the biggest difficulty i run into with my mom and i think it's a difficulty i run into with not all theists but certainly many theists broadly is you know how would you know if you were wrong and the answer is well i'm not i refuse my mom is one who can never ever 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 be wrong she never pauses and goes you know what you're right I think I may be wrong on this, and I should examine it more closely. I've never had that experience ever, and it's mind-boggling to me because I am the kind of person who am I'm so doubtful of my own beliefs and conclusions that if anybody challenges me on them, I'm very quickly ready to be like, you know what, that's a good piece of information. I need to go chew on that, and I'm I'm often confused by people like my mother who are like, nope, I will not hear any potential way that I could be incorrect on any stance I hold. And it's just, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to know much more what to do. I'm just going to keep asking, you know, the questions when stuff comes up and, and I'll reach a point where like, I don't need to keep engaging. I don't have to answer anything and everything. And I don't have to call my parents off or something. My, my dad said something just the other day that that would have prompted a thorough chastising about being anti-science. And I'm just like, it's not worth it. We've been down this road too many times before. Um, and it's yeah. fun sometimes because, you know, you, you get people who genuinely don't have the ability to, to identify when they're wrong. Um, but what was funny was just yesterday, somebody on Twitter was said how many people have to tell you you're wrong matt before you recognize that you know you might be wrong and i was like argument a mad populum <laughs> there's your fallacy it doesn't matter if the whole world tells me i'm wrong what somebody's got to do is show me that i'm wrong um but you know if, right. if your line of thinking like this you know little twitter troll is that oh we just need a few more people to tell you you're wrong um oh it's it's uh argument a mad populum there's your fallacy and then and he came back with some nonsense where he wanted to reference General Custer, but he typed in, he didn't type general, he just typed custard. And I was like, <laughs> yes, lecture me, lecture me more about custard. You've got some on your chin there, Captain Fallacy. 
I'm back. Jessica, your, uh, your mom sounds a lot like my dad. My dad won't accept correction. My dad, I've never heard my dad apologize for anything growing up. Not no. only were we not allowed to correct our parents, there is literally a you do not contradict the parents rule, even if you are correct. So if, if mom says two yep. plus two is five, you do not tell her it's four. Uh, uh, regardless. Yep. Uh, and so yep. these are the people that you may never be able to reach because I, I, people push back on me on this uh, often when I say it. It's actually alluding to some things that are psychological facts and they're actually sort of built in. Uh, obviously, there are going to be people who are better than their biology that at a certain point they're like, yeah, I might be prone to doing this naturally, but I'm not going to be that person. Uh, and one of those things is that parents sort of have an inherent disrespect of their children at a certain point they changed your diapers taught you how to speak and therefore they have the right to dismiss you just on the basis of your you and you can have a person yeah. come and engage with your parents with the exact same points and be met with a level of respect they didn't meet with you because they don't have that yep. built-in social expectation to treat you with respect uh and so That's funny yeah it's go on sorry i didn't mean to interrupt uh the funny thing to comment back on that, Jimmy, I've been trying to set a boundary with my mother to not uh, hug and kiss my child without permission. And it's been such an uphill, difficult battle. And I was ready to really lay down a lot. And Haley said, I'm going to talk to your mom because she seems to respect me more. Haley's my wife. I'm going to talk to your mom because she seems to respect me more than you. And I'm like, uh, that's true. But man, that fucking sucks. <laughs> sometimes if you if, if that feels unacceptable, sometimes it can also just be having Haley present as a third party that you're, uh, cause then there's a social responsibility of presentation. Sorry, I sound weird. I'm trying to put my jacket back on. I realized how silly I look without it. Uh, anyway, uh, sometimes there's, there's, uh, that third party respect expectation can help. Uh, what I recommend with people yeah. with boundaries, because it seems to be, people seem to only think that boundaries, you put them down and then they're either respected or they're not. And then you cut the person out of your life on that basis. I think there's a middle area yeah. where you start issuing consequences. Okay, you did it again. You kissed my child without me wanting you to. So now... I oh, know, it's him. It's him. him. He has to consent. My son does. Okay, yeah. You kissed, you kissed my child without him consenting. And so now you don't get to see him this weekend or whatever. Uh, yeah. uh, consequences yeah. to, to breaking the boundaries. She ain't going to like that. She's going to yell because that's you basically taking a parental role as you should over your child yeah. that uh, uh, that overrules her parental role. She's going to be real mad about it the first yeah. couple of times, but at a certain point, she's going to decide whether she wants a relationship with her grandkid or not. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Jessica, anything else before we let you go and move on? I don't thank you. Thank you both. I don't think so. Thank you both for your time. I appreciate you both. Awesome. Thanks, Jessica. Awesome. I'm just relieved Jessica's God hole in the screening notes wasn't a, uh, didn't turn out to be a troll because that's what we had in the notes. I'm, uh, I'm glad that turned out to be a real convo. Uh, talking to, was, uh, was, well, uh, a caller from the UK who's going to tell me how to say uh, his name. Uh, go ahead, caller from the UK. Hello, it's Vassil. Vassil, that's awesome. Hi, how are you? Thank you for taking my call. Just fine. Yeah, Cheers, what'd welcome. You, what do you want uh, to talk about? Yeah, just a very quick intro. Uh, Matt, you really helped me organize my thoughts when I was leaving Jehovah's Witnesses, so thank you for that. Uh, oh, thanks I really so much. Enjoyed your content. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, well, my question is mostly for mother. Obviously, I'm really interested in Jim, Jimmy's opinion as well on this one. But I remember ages ago uh, hearing you say that you think that we don't have free will, but we should act as if we do for the purpose of the justice system. And I just wanted to know if that's still something that you believe. That was, that was directed at you, Matt. Yeah, oh. yeah that's for you, Matt, yes. We should but act I, as I, if we I do. For both of you, but I, I remember the, the specifically Matt saying that one time. Act as if we do for the sake of the justice system. I, it, it's entirely possible that I m might have said something like that, but generally speaking, 
whether or not one has free will is irrelevant to whether or not this is the agent that is responsible for a given action. And so I don't have to act, care, or think that we have free will in order to justify holding someone responsible for an act that they demonstrably took. Just like if I have two cars in the driveway and one of them's broken, um, that's the one I'm going to fix. I, you know, I, or, or one of them's got a flat tire, that's the one that I'm not going to drive. Or one of them's got bad brakes. There we go. One, one of my cars has good brakes. The other one has bad brakes. I'm going to drive the one that has good brakes. Um, it's, it's just straightforward. You hold that car responsible um, in the sense of safety. And so something similar applies to thinking agents. I don't think we need free will. To, you know, when, when somebody shoots someone, it doesn't really matter to me what the ultimate cause was with, with respect to whether or not we hold them accountable. Um, we, it would be nice to know what the ultimate cause was so that we uh, do a better job of preventing harm, of, you know, making sure that we, we do hold people accountable when necessary, but I don't need to know that in order to hold someone accountable. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. I think this is roughly where I come from um, uh, on this on this issue. The way I'm looking at this is that I think we should act as if there is no free will. We should, if you know, we, nobody knows that for for real, for like hundred percent. But I think it's beneficial for us to act as if free will doesn't exist, as in the libertarian free will, because if we assume that people act because of some external circumstances influencing them, then we can create a set of external circumstances to kind of cause them to act the way that we want them to, right? To be beneficial for the society or the, rather than, so our you know rehabilitation programs could be more uh, fruitful if we don't put people in prison just to punish them for the free actions, but rather we try to fix whatever caused their misbehaving. Hey, I just don't know what, I, it, it seems like you, you agreed and then kind of reversed my position. Cause okay, so I mean, maybe I misunderstood your analogy. Then. So the, the car so, in your analogy is what? Basel, if, if you kill someone, mm -hmm. I'm going to hold you responsible whether you have free will or not. And because, as a practical necessity, we imprison people, it does, right now, it doesn't matter whether we're imprisoning them for... Uh, vindictive reasons or for rehabilitative reasons or whatever at a minimum um, it keeps them out of society so that they are not a continued threat I'm gonna hold them responsible whether they have free will or not whether I think they have free will or not free will is irrelevant to that so I don't understand why you are advocating that we should act as if they don't have free will or if they do what 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 changes if you act like we don't Okay. No, I understand what you mean. So let me let me clarify that because I think I wasn't clear enough. So what I mean is that um, I think the prison system, if it's uh, based on the idea of holding people accountable and putting them in prison just for the reason and the purpose of putting them in prison so that because obviously separating dangerous individuals from the society is useful. We always should do that. But but past that, what is the purpose of the prison, prison system? If it's just to hold people accountable, I think that's useless. I think the only, the only way to have a, a prison and a justice system be useful to the society is to try to rehabilitate. So if I kill somebody, it kind of, I would want the justice system to try to fix me so that I can return to the society after some time, rather than just hold me accountable. Does that make sense now? Yeah, okay. I think the reason that, that I'm confused is that you called to talk about free will, and instead now we're apparently talking about what sort of justice system is preferential. Um, yeah, because I think it's tied to free will at least a little bit. If that's all, if, if and, I might. And, and what I just argued is that I don't see how it's tied to free will at all. Okay, fair enough. If I might, Vassal, I think you're actually advocating for a system in which we do act as though people have free will, 
but we let so honestly i don't think this is a question of free will or not whether we have free will or not even if we somehow did which seems unlikely humans are still much more predictable than we think we are uh, and there are certain conditions that you can say a person, for example, born into poverty is more likely to commit these certain crimes. And uh, uh, people born in these circumstances are more likely to do this and this. And this is how marketing works, demographic tracking works, because you can actually group people and figure out with pretty high probability what people are going to do. So even if free will somehow exists, humans certainly are predictable and there's limitations to what our brains can do and, and, and uh, what choices we do make. And so... Within that, that sort of thing of this thing that undermines actually at a much later point of when the question of free will would come in, but potentially undermines our free will, I think we can take that and be more compassionate toward people, but you're still acting as though we do have free will, as though you are responsible for the choices you make, but as a result of the understanding that those choices may come from systemic issues that aren't being addressed, we favor compassionately a side that's more like rehabilitation over a, a style that is more revenge based. But that would be, that would be saying yes, at behave as though we have free will when considering the implications of free will on the justice system. I, I don't understand I this. Yeah. I don't understand this behave as though we have free will. You are responsible whether you had free will or not. That's the point. That's true. So, so this is where I think we're disagreeing a little bit. So what the language of responsibility or, and accountability, I don't think it's that useful for the society in the long run. And when it comes to the question of uh, you, Jimmy, are saying that um, we actually, in my system, in, in, the, in what I presented, we do assume people have free will. I would say no, because if you think that, so, that people have libertarian free will, there's nothing you can do to them to influence their decisions. It's just a, because it's they just have a parade of equivocation. Will. You yeah, just keep bringing up listens. free will, and then you want to do it as libertarian free will. No, no, I, as I'm if talking specifically about libertarian. No, no, no. I'm not talking about you libertarian. said free will, and then you immediately switched to libertarian free will as if those two are equivalent. They're not. Here's the scenario. Jim Bob killed someone. What should we do? We should separate him from the society and then try to figure out why it happened. And, it, and, and if we don't figure out why it happened and if we don't have any way to actually fix him does jim bob just sit in prison forever um if the state if the experts agree that is still there is still risk of him committing the, the same crime yes great at what point in that quick run through of jim bob did we care or discuss free will not once at one point did we well, worry about I would say what, yes we did Oh my God! No, we didn't. No, we fucking didn't. Well, we you we shot we we ran through it, but the the fact no, we the didn't. Act of assessing Stop. by the experts. Stop. The free will. We did not. I said I asked very fucking specific questions. Jim Bob killed someone. What should we do? And your answer was that we, it's okay to put him in prison to protect him from doing harm to the rest of the population and try to fix him. Okay. And I said, if we're unable to find a way to fix him, and Jim Bob's going to stay that way forever, should he remain in prison? And you said yes. Where was free will in, that, in those points? How do you know he will do this again? In I, this scenario? That was never fucking discussed. And whether or not he will do it is irrelevant. Free will is irrelevant to whether or not he will do it again. You, you're just assuming that an action is a matter of free will. I'm saying whether or not Jim Bob has free will, he killed someone. Whether or not he had free will or not, he killed someone. What should we do? At every step in that conversation, free will was irrelevant. It wasn't asserted. It wasn't investigated. It didn't matter. Does it matter whether Jim Bob acted of his own free will or not when he killed somebody? For the murder victim, no. It doesn't matter for anybody. If Jim Bob killed someone, that was an act of volition by that agent. Whether or not he has free will is irrelevant. That person, that agent, is the one who killed someone. Therefore, we need to do something to either to hopefully try and help that 
help Jim Bob if we can. But in a minimum, we have to assess the risk of Jim Bob killing someone else and protecting other people from that. It doesn't matter whether he had free will or not. He still took that action. Yes, but if we're trying to fix Jim Bob's behavior and we're trying to prevent him from, like, cure him of the murder rightist, right? We, if he actually has a true free will, there is nothing we can do to affect his decision making because he has free will. That's wrong. But then if he's not no, that's, a truly that's free simply agent, not true. That there is a set of things that that's we can That's simply do not true. That is simply not true. Start to finish everything you just asserted is not demonstrably true. If Jim Bob killed someone and Jim Bob doesn't have free will, then whether or not you can fix him, f free will is irrelevant to that. You said that if Jim Bob killed someone and he has free will, there's no way to fix him. That is an assertion that you nor anybody else has demonstrated because you know how you, assuming someone has free will, you can change their mind. Yes, but there's nothing you can do reliably. As in, you can't, for example, oh my if we God, develop the, a the fuck away. Go away. Now, yeah. now that I've shown that you just asserted something that isn't fucking true, you acknowledge me and, Im and immediately put in, ah, but there's no way to do it reliably. Uh, I don't care if we can do it at all. Today. Shut up. I don't care if we can do it at all right now. We were speaking hypothetically. Even if we can never do anything to help Jim Bob, that was the scenario that I gave you. And now you've tap danced back to, yes, but we can't do that right now. Well, congratulations, minority report man. I'm not talking about what we can do right now. I'm talking about the ideal and how free will Neither is irrelevant to it at every fucking point. I'm also not talking about what we can do right now. You're a liar. You just did. No, I'm talking about the principle. I'm still operating within no. the... Uh, you, you just asserted you, you just asserted that if he has free will we can't do anything about that and then when i pointed out that you haven't demonstrated that you said we can't do it now no that's not what i mean what i mean is that if there is an uh, a method that we could use to get a murderer to stop being a murderer right by using science or whatever right and this would be scientifically sound. So that means that we could repeat that and use it on other murderers and just apply it and it works. It's not going to be the same. Um, it's not going to be as useful on free agents because they will, at the end of the day, by definition of Bullshit. being a free agent, they will make their Bullshit. own decisions. No, sir, that's Why? not how free agency works. You're just asserting shit that isn't true. If we find a way to convince a murderer to no longer be a murderer, you don't get to then say, oh, if they have free will, that's not going to work as well. No, you don't get to assert that. And by the way, that's not at all what we were discussing when you decided to say what we can or can't do now. If I said now, I misspoke. I did not mean now. I, st I was operating within the example you gave me. I don't yeah, care well, about what you're still we making right assertions. Now. You're still moment. making assertions about how effective a fictional, how effective a fictional fucking cure would be, and asserting that it won't work as well with free will. Well, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. You have to actually demonstrate that, and you don't get to just inject free will by asserting that things won't work as well if people have free will. You don't get to just assert that. I have no idea if people have free will or not. If Jim Bob has free will, then your assertion is that Jim Bob has free will, and now the cure that we have for someone who wouldn't have free will is somehow not as effective with Jim Bob, which is one of the most batshit crazy assertions I've ever heard, because either Jim Bob and the rest of us in this fictional model have free will or we don't. You don't get to claim that if Jim Bob has free will, we can't do anything about it. Because free will allows someone to actually just change their mind as an act of volition. As that is the, the will that you're talking about. I, I don't know. I don't know why we're spending any more time on this. So just I'll stop and just literally one last question, and I'm happy to hang up that after that. If if free will is real, if Jim Bob has free will, do you think that we can cause him? to make a decision.
I yeah. don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. I don't. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't, I don't. All right. Holy we'll move on. shit! If free will is if if free will is real, do you think we can X? If ghosts are real, do you think we can X? If spirits are real, if gods are real, do you think we can X? That is the type of question that I absolutely fucking despise. Because there are people out in the world who actively think that there are gods and spirits and things like that, and they have no way to demonstrate it. And they're the ones that are out there reaching conclusions about what we can and can't do with a god or a spirit or anything else. My point was that if a person kills someone else, whether they have free will or not, because I don't know how you can demonstrate that. I don't know how you can prove it. I don't even necessarily know what free will is. It's certainly beyond stupid to sit here and go, gosh, does this thing that we can't demonstrate mean that we couldn't do this? I don't care. I don't want to fucking investigate the navel gazing. And if you're going to talk about what are idealistic views of, of a prison system and how to do that, and I'm sitting here saying, look, here are the facts. This person killed someone else. If we determine that they're a risk to other people, what should we do? Nowhere in that conversation is free will. Oh, well, it's there in whether or not they're a risk. No, they're a risk. It's either true that we have free will or it's not true. If it's, if it's not true, if we do not have free will, is it still possible for one agent to kill another? Seems so. Yes. I don't believe and in free will. If we yes, do have free will, it's still possible for one agent to kill another. That means that free will is, in, is irrelevant to whether or not one agent can kill another. I don't know how else to explain it. No, I understand that bit. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. All right, Basil. We're moving on. Okay. Thank you. See ya. It's, it's like when people get so... I, I don't know. I, I'm a compatibilist when it comes to free will. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. We definitely have a will. But it's like people get hung up on free will as if it makes any difference. It doesn't change what happened. It doesn't <sighs> change who's responsible. I wonder if because he started, he moved between free will, libertarian free will, agency. I wonder if, I wonder if at the beginning of those calls, we need to always ask, give us the definition you're asking us to engage with. Because I think he jumped around several. Because you've got the philosophical definition versus the colloquial definition versus libertarian free will uh, and all, yeah. all of those things. And yeah, the... The what's funny is the co the liber the philosophical definition of free will, and the colloquial definition are pretty much incompatible with each other. So to say you have free will of one is to say you don't with the other. Uh, but I do digress. Anyway, K from the UK, K K of UK, you're on the line. Hi, hello. How are you guys? You know, living that Exhausted. dream. Exhausted. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. So I just wanted to call to briefly discuss um, some stuff about methodological naturalism. Um, and if we get to it, some stuff about possibility, because I know that that could be a big topic. So I was wondering um, how you guys would define methodological naturalism um, before Perhaps I launch into methodological parts. naturalism is a process that begins with the assumption that only the natural world exists because you don't get to make assertions beyond that when you're dem trying to demonstrate causation. Actually, that's more that I, that I need to say. Methodological naturalism is an investigative process by which you do not get to assert that non natural explanations. Okay. All right. That's good. Um, and would you describe methodological naturalism then as um, a philosophical position or as a scientific position? Um, so science is methodological naturalism in action. The, the concept, the ideal, is philosophical in nature. I, I don't understand what you're asking or why. Right. So um, I think that the way that I understand methodologi methodological naturalism um, is that um, science um, is the only reliable route to truth, 
even though scientific no. results. You know, why ask okay. me for a definition of methodological naturalism if you're just going to fucking ignore it? Okay. Um, do you think that there are other reliable methods to truth? What kind of fucking quiz is this? Oh, no. Well, I was if, if you disagree with that part of the definition, then I was wondering if there was a disagreement that you or a counterexample that you had. A counterexample to what? Well, because you said no when I said science is the only reliable route to truth. I didn't say no. Wow. Okay. We're, we're incredibly confused here. I think it might be because you have a script. Um, let's try this again. You asked what methodological naturalism was. I answered you. What, what comes after that? Um, I think that um, there may be some problems with methodological naturalism. Um, specifically, I think that, um, method methodological naturalism, uh, has a difficult time, um, demarcating. It's very difficult to demarcate between scientific and non-scientific fields. Um, I, and I think that's a difficult, um, problem for methodological naturalism. I think that, um, a lot of what's said, um, about, I don't, what I don't, naturalism is oh okay sorry i don't understand what the hell you're talking about you're speaking in vagueness methodological naturalism yeah. is is essentially the so we all recognize that there's a natural world can't prove it but we we recognize it whether or not there's anything beyond the natural world is an open question and so anybody who's asserting that there's something beyond the natural world would need to demonstrate that there is and how they know and does it interact with the natural world in any detectable fashion. Methodological yeah. naturalism is a methodological naturalism is a philosophical ideological concept that holds that when we are cataloging the list of potential explanations for an observation we do not get to assert anything beyond the natural world because things beyond the natural world haven't been demonstrated. And you think sure. I mean, there's a, there's a fault. You think there's a fault in that ideal. Why? Right. I, I think that, um, I think that there's a fault in the ideal, um, because if going with the definition that you've provided, um, if it's in fact the case that we can, let's say, only invoke things within the natural world, um, but then in addition to that, supposing for the sake of argument, um, and I'm, not, I'm agnostic, so, so I'm not a theist, but supposing that, let's say, there was some God that created the universe, um, so it was true that there was some prime mover or first mover and whatnot, then it would perhaps turn out that that force would need to um, in some sense need to be invoked. Um, so then it seems as though methodological naturalism would require no. us to no. sort of no. stop at some point and say, well, we can't no. invoke that force because that's beyond the natural world. When yes. it seems yes. as though the best yeah, yeah. Thing stop. To do would be to stop, K, okay. okay, stop, K, okay. we, we stop, K, okay. stop, K, stop, K, stop, K. It's not a problem with methodological naturalism that the supernatural fails to demonstrate itself. That's a problem for the supernatural. If in fact there's a God that doesn't demonstrate its, its existence, it, the fact that methodological naturalism says you don't get to suppose that there's a God as a cause, that's not a problem with methodological naturalism. That's a problem with a God hiding itself from our only best way of actually investigating the world. What method would you replace methodological naturalism with that would allow you to suppose a god and how do you determine which gods you get to suppose and which ones you don't right so um i think that um with respect to these what type of method you would use i think that you could use philosophical methods i think you could use historical nope. methods 
Um, and uh, no, those methods I'm, could I'm be specifically asking. To come to, um, no, I'm beliefs. sorry. I'm sorry, but there isn't historical evidence that is sufficient to confirm the existence of a god or to tell you which god exists or not. I yeah. asked yeah. what method. I I asked what method you would replace methodological naturalism with that would allow you to justifiably assert God X as a potential sure. cause for observation O and not also sure. include God Y, Z, and, and Q. Sure. So, um, as a working hypothesis, you could potentially support um, some version either of proper functionalism or a phenomenal conservatism with um, sort of a Swinburnian principle of credulity model. Um, so if something seems to you that he... So I asked you a question, and I didn't expect... Yeah, nothing that you said is a method. And you haven't de demonstrated the efficacy of any of it. So basically what you're saying is, your position is, you don't think methodological naturalism is good enough because it doesn't include supernatural explanations. That's your objection, right? Um, I wouldn't describe my objection that way. I describe the objection as it seems as though uh, methodological naturalism suffers from three main issues. Um, so it seems that methodological naturalism supports a claim that science itself doesn't really state. Um, because it doesn't really seem that, uh, as I said previously, it doesn't seem that science um, univocally says, well, science is, is the reliable um, way to truth per se. I mean, it seems science like is the most them. consistent. No, science is the most consistently reliable pathway to un demonstrably consistently reliable pathway to understanding reality. But your objection, what, what is your objection to, to methodological naturalism? Right. Um, that itself, right. So if, yeah, so that itself is not a scientific statement. That's a philosophical statement. Um, oh my God. So Would I, you answer? So, no, all right, here, I'm going to yeah. mute, I'm going to mute you so that I don't have to yell over you. What is your objection to methodological naturalism, sir? Tell me now. My objection to methodological naturalism is that it seems to epistemically wall off the possibility of um, a prime mover, if that prime mover does exist. So it's a conditional objection. Okay, I'm going to mute you again, and you're going to shut up and listen. And whether or not you get to speak on this show ever again is going to be based entirely on what you say when I unmute you. I said that your primary objection to methodological naturalism was that it excluded the supernatural and you said you wouldn't characterize it that way and i just asked you what is your objection to methodological naturalism and you said it seems to epistemologically wall off the possibility of a prime mover that's the most dishonest answer that you could have possibly given i think and still maintained within there because what you're objecting to is that methodological naturalism doesn't allow in the supernatural prime mover that you fucking prefer, which betrays the fact of the questions that I was asking earlier on how do you establish which potential supernatural causes you are going to include as candidate explanations and which ones you're going to exclude. Meanwhile, methodological naturalism does not epistemologically wall off the possibility of anything. It just says you don't get to propose supernatural explanations until such time as they've been demonstrated. It doesn't say the supernatural is impossible. That is functionally and repeatedly over 20 fucking years now been, been spewed by me as the distinction between philosophical naturalism, which does wall off the possibility of a, of a supernatural mover, from methodological naturalism, which doesn't tell you at all about what is or isn't possible with regard to the supernatural. It just says you don't get to propose a candidate explanation that isn't demonstrable. Now, since now I've twice, I have shown that your objection to methodological naturalism is that it does not permit appeals to the supernatural.
what you have now described as it seems to epistemologically wall off the possibility of a prime mover, which is absolutely dishonest and not what methodological naturalism is. Would you like to try again? What is there your objection to methodological naturalism? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So um, I think that the objection in light of what you just said um, would be that once, uh, so yeah, once the demonstration came, let's say, um, let's say it did, I'm not, I'm not saying that it exists, but if it did, um, I, I suppose, I wonder, uh, if the methodological naturalist would then say, um, well, we're not supposed to, um, invoke, um, supernatural forces. Okay. You're done. Um, in you're done. I'm muting you now and you're going to listen again. What you just said is that your objection to methodological naturalism would then be, once the demonstration came, let's say it did, you suppose you wonder if the methodological naturalist would say blah, blah, blah. K, you're being dishonest, and I suspect, suspect that you're being dishonest with yourself as well, because that's not an objection to methodological naturalism, that's a twofold fantasy. Because now, when I said, what was your objection to methodological naturalism, your twofold fantasy was, one, let's pretend that there's been a demonstration for the supernatural such that it should be considered a candidate explanation, something which has not happened. And then after we pretend that, your objection is that you wonder whether or not a methodological naturalist would still reject that. You're being dishonest as fuck if there ever was a demonstration of a supernatural cause, confirmation of a supernatural cause, such that it would be considered a viable candidate to explain an observation, it would not be ruled out by anyone whose position is you don't get to assert candidate explanations until there's a demonstration. And it doesn't get to be objected to, no philosophical position gets to be objected to based on your suspicions about whether or not a, a, a someone who adheres to that position would be honest. How dare you? Can you be uh, honest? Okay. Yeah, of course. Cool. So do you acknowledge that that's one of the most bullshit objections to methodological natural is impossible to do the what if they don't listen? Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm suggesting that what if they don't listen? I, I guess I'm wondering. You, you were, um, so goodbye. Closing. You right. were, goodbye. It's literally, oh, you didn't say literally uh, what if they don't. I, I took notes. You said that your objection to methodological nationalism was once the demonstration came in, let's say that it did, I suppose, I wonder if the methodological naturalist would, and then you proceeded to give the scenario under which they would then reject the demonstration. So basically, you're arguing that let's imagine that we lived in a world where, it was, where there was a demonstration that God was actually a possible candidate explanation. I'm against methodological naturalism because I wonder if a naturalist would still reject the God possibility. It, 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 it's incredibly dishonest. Total disaster of a call, folks. I think K stands for K, Daddy, can I have another? Okay, because that was punishment for K. Total disaster. That was my best shot. That's so I frustrating. To light, I was trying to lighten the mood. <laughs> I, I just, it's like, I'm fine with somebody being agnostic. I'm fine with somebody, you know, saying, hey, I, I have concerns about methodological naturalism. Um, it, it Because one of the things is methodological naturalism um, is different and distinct from philosophical naturalism. It's not making an assertion about what is, it's making an assertion about what we can what we can use. And if it turns out that we go forever without coming up, like let's say that there's a God that's responsible for something and methodological naturalism prevents us from ever uh, saying, yes, we're convinced that this God did that. That is not a problem with the method, that's a problem with the God. Because if there's a God who can manifest in a detectable way then that God can demonstrate its existence, confirming the existence of the supernatural, confirming that the supernatural can impact the natural world. And methodological naturalists would have no option but to say, here is a, a confirmed demonstrable effect, 
and this gets to be a candidate cause for it. Yeah. Well, the next call is also uh, uh, someone who disagrees with you. We've got That's Mike fine. who in chat had said Matt was wrong about the supernatural's testability. Uh, Mike in California, you are on the line. Hey there, I'm Matt and Jimmy. How are you? Um, what up? Cool. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So in chat, I think the last caller, I think we kind of clarified um, uh, the position. Uh, I, I don't think there's an argument per se anymore. Um, I, I think it was just a, a slight misunderstanding uh, in chat, but I think uh, we're saying the same thing, to be honest with you, um, about the supernatural versus the natural. And I 100% agree we need to demonstrate so anything that's outside of the natural, something that we cannot demonstrate or detect at this point, <clears throat> is something that we you know, should not believe in, of course. However, my question is, should we therefore uh, not be open-minded to oh testing the possibility? Should we not be open? Okay, here, this is real simple. Is the supernatural currently testable? It is not. Is it possible uh, that we could find a way to test for the supernatural at some point? It is. I, my answer for, to that is, I don't know. I don't know how anybody can give any other answer than I don't know. If you can't detect it or identify it now, how could you ever reach the conclusion that sometime in the future it's possible for us to detect and test it? We, we don't know for sure, but it is. We don't possible. know at all. We don't know at all. What, how, what on earth makes you think that in the future we can possibly test the supernatural? Well, let's define what you mean by supernatural. So supernatural, you're saying that something is outside of natural. Our current understanding of the natural, right? It's, it's outside of that. Would you agree with that? That's what supernatural means. Well, no, as long as you day, by that you as as long as by that you don't you're not meaning that it's just beyond what's known. I'm saying that supernatural is something that okay. is ab, that exists but is not natural. That is not. Um, okay, so that's the point. That's the point, Matt. Though when we say something is not natural. What do you mean by that? What, what do you mean by something is not no, natural? Sir. No, sir. I've given, no, sir. I've given the definition. It may be that there's zero things that meet that definition. And if that's the case, then the supernatural doesn't exist. And if the supernatural doesn't exist, then it's impossible for you to ever detect it because then you would be detecting something that doesn't exist. But we don't know whether or not it's possible for the supernatural to exist. And when I asked, can it be detected in the future, you said, Yes. How do you know that? I say it's possible because no, our detectability. You don't know that it's possible God. either. You don't know that it will happen, and you don't know that it's possible for it to happen. It, so, Mike, therefore, Mike, Mike, stop. If there's, if in fact there is nothing supernatural, right? If, in fact, the yeah. actual state of affairs is that no supernatural things exist, let's imagine that statement is true. Is it possible to detect the supernatural ever under any circumstances? No. No. Good. And do you no. know, do you know whether or not the, the statement, there are no supernatural things, do you know whether or not that's true? I do not. I don't either, which is why, if it is in fact impossible to detect because there's nothing, and we don't know whether or not there's nothing, then by the transitive property, our only reasonable answer to will we eventually be able to test and detect the supernatural, the only answer is I don't know, and it is currently unknowable. Okay, agree with that. Yeah. However, 
just one thing with that. Is it possible in the future, though? You're going to say yes, you don't know. That's the Jesus answer, right? fucking Christ. It's Is it possible in the future to test the supernatural? No, 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 no. That's not what I was going to say. That's not what, that's not what I was going to say. Okay. So we're what what, what do you want to know if it's possible in the future? <clears throat> Is it possible that what we consider now to be the supernatural, a.k.a. say like ghosts or something like that, is it Jesus possible that there Christ. could be a scientific explanation for it in the future? Mike, you're being dishonest as, our, as fuck right now. Because was this was not this was not the discussion. If you had called in and said, hey, is it possible that the things some people think are supernatural turn out to be natural? I would have instantly said yes. Because we know that's happened before. That was not the right. discussion at any point. So why are you dishonestly trying to make it that now? Because when I asked you if it would be possible in the future to detect the supernatural, you said yes. And then we had to have a big roundabout discussion to get you to finally change your answer to I don't know. So why after we got to there, are you now wanting to change the subject to whether or not it's possible that something that someone thinks is supernatural will actually be identified as natural, which by the way, the answer should still yeah, be, I'm, I don't I'm, know. It is. I'm not trying to change the answer. I was adding to the answer. I wasn't changing it. So it says here from chat, your topic is, can the supernatural be testable? It doesn't say right. here, is it possible that people could be wrong about whether or not something is supernatural or natural? Those are not the same category. They're not, they're not the same category. They're not the same subject. They're not in the same fucking ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. And I think we clarified that even listen to the last call. I think it was kind of clarified. So I just remember you so, saying open-minded, okay. which I think undermines so much yeah. of what you're saying right now. Yeah. Okay. Open-minded meaning us as, say atheists right when someone when someone says something like oh i saw a ghost yesterday or something like that we immediately get on the person and say you know you're you know whatever uh rather than saying hey you know what i love being okay, categorized in a we i reject okay i'm gonna mute you mike because we've had people call in and say they've seen a ghost and what 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 have jimmy and i done pretty fucking consistently when anybody has called in to suggest that they've seen a ghost. I don't know. What was your question, Matt? Right, if you're not going to listen, I don't see any reason to keep talking to you. You, you made this accusation about open-mindedness, saying we as atheists, when somebody says they've seen a ghost... And then you didn't quite finish the sentence because I think you realized that you were about to make an assertion that's absolute bullshit. Because if somebody calls in this show and says that they've seen a ghost, Jimmy and I are going to ask them, how do you know you saw a ghost? We're open to having them demonstrate. First of all, I'm willing to accept that, generally speaking, they're convinced that they saw something. I just don't know how they've justified that what they saw was a ghost. And, and you'll also notice that at no point since I started this conversation about them saying they saw a ghost and me asking what it is and going on, at no point is the word supernatural under the conversation at all. Because I haven't ruled out the possibility that they did in fact see something which could justifiably call, be called a ghost, which is not in fact supernatural. You see? Because I don't have the ability to fucking arrogantly intuit the ontology of every proposition. No, I got so, you. I think, I think we're all... Yeah, go so if somebody says they saw a ghost, how, what exactly do you think is open-minded versus not open-minded? No, I think that's a perfectly open-minded response. Oh my God. Absolutely. Goodbye. What do you, what do you I mean? Just oh asked my God. You a I just asked you a question for your thoughts on something. And all you did was say that, basically say, I agree with you. 
I asked for something specific. What do you want me to well, why say? Is this, what specifically do I, you want me to say? Well, I'm sorry here, Mike, but a conversation is one where I ask a question and you give a response. If you want me to give the question and the fucking response, what do I need you for? Ask away. I'll answer any, anything you I ask. Did I'll, ask. I'll answer it. I did ask. Okay, ask it one more time and I'll answer it. Nope. All right. Bye. That uh, that call that was that was that was something. What sucks is we probably do agree on the the bulk of it. Yeah. It's just that for whatever reason, I sit here and I ask a specific question because what we're trying to do is get to clarity. And so I'll say, hey, what do you think is open-minded or not open-minded? What are you objecting to? What is it you think atheists are doing that isn't open-minded enough? Because quite frankly, we have a limited amount of resources to investigate claims on this reality. Which claims should we be putting resources to? Should we be putting them to Bigfoot claims, Loch Ness Monster claims, Chupacabra claims, ghost claims, spirit claims? Being open-minded doesn't mean that you have to be wasteful about your resources, and it doesn't mean you have to ignorantly and blindly pursue every proposition that comes along. You make no progress. What it is about is about triaging the likelihood of a proposed explanation for a phenomenon and determining which ones are subject to actual investigation. Because if you have an untestable claim, while it may be interesting, and it's certainly acceptable to be open-minded to the possibility that that, expl that that explanation is a candidate in the future, if it's untestable, every second you spend on it that isn't about trying to find a way to test it is wasted. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I, I was as frustrated with that call as the simultaneous revelation I was having, uh, over here on my smartphone on the side that apparently to get a burrito bowl with extra meat and queso from Chipotle now comes in for one at $20 and 70 cents. And I don't know which I dislike more that that's true or the call from Mike. Both are pretty bad. Uh, let's talk to Tony in New York. A Catholic who wants to have a conversation about God's existence. Tony, you are on the line. Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Hey, Tony, we're doing all right. I'm all right. That's good. Yeah, I believe, uh, you know, I'm Catholic myself. I believe that uh, Jesus Christ does exist. Um, I've been attending church, not as much as I used to, to be honest with you. Uh, nowadays, I attend church maybe once, uh, once every two weeks, once every three weeks. But I grew up uh, going once a week, every Sunday, and I have kids myself, and I believe that, you know, we all, we all came from somewhere because, I mean, we didn't come out of the air, you know what I mean? It's not like we, uh, you know, we somehow dropped out, out of the sky or something. We all got somewhere, and the only radical, like, only reason I can see, even though I do have some doubts in general, I believe that he does exist because... We didn't come from, you know, we didn't poof out air. You know what I mean? And we got to believe, uh, we got to believe in is him. Is that really? You know? Tony, the fact that you we didn't that? poof out of the air, does that mean that the only other explanation is that God created everything? Uh, if God doesn't exist, it would be very scary, my friend, to be honest with you. You know that? Well, I, no, I didn't. So, so once again, Tony. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I'm really good at asking specific questions, so I'd like it if people okay. would answer the questions I ask. If it's All true right. that we didn't pop out of the air, is, therefore, God created us the only other explanation? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. So, you don't think evolution is possible at all? Uh, evolution is possible, but not in a form of man creating himself, no. Oh, no, no, I, evolution has nothing to do with anything creating itself. It just demonstrates that life changes and eventually results in us modern. I believe there is a form of evolution, absolutely. We see it in ourselves uh, as okay, a... Okay, but, but evolution 
doesn't require a God and doesn't take a God into account. And so you, you what you seem to want, which is fine because a lot of Catholics want this, is you want to accept the science behind evolution, but inject a God into it. But as soon as you do that, you undermine everything about evolution to which now evolution is irrelevant because God could create without evolution and evolution doesn't require a God. So it's like saying, um, I, there's, a, there's a cake downstairs. Now, we know that my wife could bake a cake and we know that God could create a cake, at least, you know, when we're, when we're listing off things God could do if he existed. And so if I walk downstairs and I find a cake, is it more reasonable for me to conclude that my wife made a cake or my wife made a cake with God's help or God made the cake? More reasonable, probably your wife made the cake, I would say. Yeah. At that point. And that's because that's kind of familiar to us. Why does it suddenly change Correct. when you're talking about human beings? Because I'm presuming that you know about sexual intercourse and how sperms and eggs get together and form a human being and that that human yeah, being then grows. And hand, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you might knew and you're Catholic. So I didn't want, but you never assume. Um, so that's how all that happens. Your kids are different from you. You're different from your parents. Um, if this happens for millions of years, how does that not result in a sufficient change in people? Um, there's no God involved in you creating your four kids. You know, um, I, I believe that in terms of my kids or my change or revolution or whatever you, that you're speaking about, but you know what? I mean, listen, uh, evolution does definitely happen, absolutely, without a doubt. Um, and do I feel blessed about having the kids? Yes. And because my kids are all healthy, they they came out real nice. You know, there's no, like, you have kids who are born with defects nowadays. My kids have no defects. So I'm proud of that, you know what I mean? But um, in, in terms of, you know, do I pray to them? Yes. Do I get some kind of reciprocation? I believe so, you know, because I actually had, um, had a heart attack a couple of years ago, and I pulled through it, and I had a major heart Me attack. Me too. You know what I'm talking about? So I had a heart attack. I had open heart surgery. I had a triple bypass. I've got pictures of my heart down on the I fridge. I had a bypass. Yeah. Bypass. I, had, I, yeah. I, I, got, I got, so you had a bypass. I had a triple bypass. Uh, I don't think there was any God involved. I think there was a surgeon involved. I don't have any reason to think that there was a God involved in pulling me through. It doesn't even make sense for a God to want to pull me through. Um, I have no reason to think that a God exists or had any impact on that at all. So now we're in a situation where both of us had heart attacks. Both of us had heart surgery. I don't think a God was involved. You do. How do we tell which one of us is right? Um, there's no way to tell uh, which, uh, you know what? There's no way to tell which one of us is right. And I'm a logical thinker. I'm not like the, one of those guys who's going to argue with you. I guess. Until, like, I guess. Until you. The, the thing is, you know, I mean. The thing is, if, if somebody says, like, if I see here's a real lottery ticket and here's a fake lottery ticket and we shuffle them up and I say, how do we tell the difference? And we can say, you know what? There's no way to tell the difference. Is there any circumstance under which I could point to one of those and say, that's the one that's real if we can't tell the difference? At that point, you would have probably most likely, most likely you wouldn't be able to, you know, unless there's right. like, which is why some, which uh, is, maybe hologram is, on the lottery ticket. That's about it. No, 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 no. I'm saying if, if there was if there was a hologram, then we would say there's a way to tell the difference. It's the hologram. I'm saying here's two tickets. We're told one of them's real and one of them's not. And you and I agree. We have no way we can tell which one of them's real. And so in that scenario, right. I don't I, I, I can't point to one of them and say it's real. But you can't you are you are pointing at one of us and saying this is the one that I think God messed with. You know, I, you know, all I can say is I do believe because at one point I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I mean, you, you're a little older than me, I see, right? And eventually you're gonna, you know, you're gonna pass, I'm gonna pass, and eventually we're gonna find out the truth, man. And then that's what no, I'm sir. To, you know? No, sir. No, sir. If in fact there is no God and no afterlife, then you and I are both gonna die, and neither one of us are gonna discover anything. There won't be an us to discover. 
If the end is yeah, the you end, gotta hope he, you got to believe. You got to hope he's. He no, you don't got to believe. No, you don't got to believe. No, you don't got to believe. Hey, maybe what on earth makes you think that life isn't sad? Why? Why would you prefer to believe something that may not be true, just because it hides how? Mis so, for example, I got one life. It's the only life I know I'm going to get, and every action I take is based on the notion that I have no reason to think that I'm going to get an afterlife. And I think that when people live their life as if they are actually going to get an afterlife, they live it worse because they don't have the motivation to make things right the first time, to solve problems, to work together towards solutions. If the earth is just a place to wipe our feet until we get to go to happy land forever, um, then wh why should we care about this? If you were living in a shitty rundown apartment and you knew that next year you were going to get to move into a mansion, how much effort would you put into sprucing up that shitty rundown apartment? You don't have to answer. We already know. None of us would do but it no any more than absolutely. But that, see, that's the kind of maybe difference between me and the next guy. Whatever I do in life, I do try to make some sort of effort. I didn't say there'd be no effort. It, okay, so you're you're in a little um, rundown trailer in a trailer park, and the water's broken. You're going to fix that because you're going to keep using that. But if there's a hole in the wall and you covered it up with duct tape while you're there, and you know that next year you're going to be out of that trailer and living in a mansion down the street, how much effort and money and resources are you going to put towards replacing that duct tape and putting up a whole new wall? Uh, definitely not going to put up a whole new wall, but I would try to patch up with wood. That's about uh, that's Why? what I would go with, you know. Why? Just so uh, so you know, it's not cold or too hot in, in, in summer or too cold in the winter. No, 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 no. The air's leaking. When when you move out, that trailer is going to get thrown away. Nobody else is ever going to use this. Why would you spend point, time repairing something that's... Effort. No, at that point, I yeah. wouldn't, no. Yeah. And so when we all, according to Christianity and Catholicism, etc., when we all leave this world, what happens to this world? Um, it, seems, it seems like the world is getting worse every year, my man. So, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Wow. You know? I, I, I said when we all... According to Catholicism, oh, when we all leave, when they're still going to be here. Once we all leave and nobody's here, what happens? I guess that's a tough question. I mean, will it still be here? What does the Absolutely. Bible say? Probably. What does the Bible say? Um, I don't have the Bible in front of me, but uh, I don't even remember that passage, to be honest with you, you know? So, Revelation 21, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Mm. The, the, according to the Bible, you know, I mean, like, like, earth goes like, away. Like, like I'm trying to tell you, my friend, you know, like, I, I go to church, but I'm not like, in terms of the Bible, I don't know the Bible word for word, I just, you know... I mean, I read it when I was a kid. That's about it. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I don't know what to say because this wasn't about whether or not you knew what the Bible says off the top of your head. I'm just, you might have. I'm just saying, you know. You, you might what, have, you, you might know, not have. You know. but, but now we're in a position where my point was, um, hang on. My point was that if you knew that the earth that you were going that you were living on was going to go away you don't have as and you're going to live in paradise you don't have as much motivation to care for it as if you thought this is the only place that i'm going to live and my kids are going to have to to take care of this place that gives people different motivations to take care of the earth right correct i mean if i didn't have yeah. kids i probably That's would uh, put less effort and this in, is why you know what i mean and, and and all of this was because um, you had basically said, hey, neither one of us knows, so you just got to believe. And my point was, no, 
if you believe that there's another life, that impacts how you live this one. And this is the only one we know we're going to get. And so we're now in a position, Tony, and I appreciate, I genuinely appreciate your call and your honesty and you're a nice guy and everything else. But from my perspective, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, we are now in agreement that you believe that there's a God and a God that interacts in reality in a detectable way, and I do not believe that. And you prefer to believe that you're going to go to an afterlife with this God and that that fundamentally changes how you act in this life. And I think it changes how you act in this life as well. And my only objection is I don't understand how people can run around and say, I don't have any way to prove to anyone, including myself, that God is real, but I'm going to believe it anyway. Because not only do I not think it's a good thing to believe in a God, I definitely don't think it's a good thing to believe in something that we admit we can't demonstrate to anyone, including ourselves. So if, if somebody came to you and said, I don't have any reason to believe that, um, that aliens are replacing me every night with a clone, but I choose to believe it anyway, or I'm going to believe it anyway. I mean, wouldn't you kind of look at them like, like a little stank face of, how does that make sense? I mean, in terms of aliens, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really believe in aliens, but who knows? But well, uh, well, hang on. I mean, in terms, why? I, I get it. I, I apologize. I interrupted you in mid thought, but you shrugged off aliens and and did it with kind of a laugh, as if we all should. Aren't aliens, which are natural in origin, in a universe with billions upon billions of stars? Aren't alien creatures almost a certainty and definitely more likely than a supernatural being that no one can demonstrate? Well, um, in terms of the aliens and uh, what you just asked right there, first, before I even go into that, I did say at the end of the aliens comment, I said, who knows? So maybe they are out there. Maybe I just never seen one, so I, I can't tell you, you know, but in terms I've never of, seen one either. Um, but yeah, I mean, how many dude, stars we are there? We probably both both locked up. <laughs> never seen a god either. Oh. Yeah, I've never seen a god. However, I've have seen stars and planets orbiting those stars that form galaxies that are parts of universes where there are billions and billions of universes with billions of galaxies, with billions of stars, with billions and billions of planets, and you think it's that we're the only ones that this is the only thing in the entire universe where life is um i i couldn't say to be honest with you i just i'm not really uh up on that topic but i believe that possibly uh we might be we might not be but i mean if, we might if be I we might not be that topic I, yeah Yep, I, I'm with you. We might be the only ones, we might not be. But it seems like there's a thing called the Drake equation where we can attempt to calculate how many likely uh, habitable planets. We might be the first. We might be the last. We might be the only. But to look out at all of those planets and be like, yeah, it's, it's more ridiculous for someone to think there's life somewhere out there than it is to think there's a god. That's the one I don't get. Because I agree, I don't know for sure whether or not there's aliens, but I know enough about science and about biology to suggest that it's at least in the, it seems unlikely that we're the only living thing in the entirety of the universe. But at a minimum, even, even if we were, how does the notion that life could exist somewhere else in the universe become more ridiculous than the claim that there's a God that nobody can demonstrate? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, like, you know, see, every, I, I believe everyone does have their own opinion. Everyone has to write their own opinion. And, uh, yeah, of course you say you can't see him because we can't. But as me personally, I, I, I do believe in Jesus Christ. I do want to meet him one day. But am I positive that he's there? No. Do I want to believe he's there? Yes. Do I currently believe he's there? Yes. But we have a difference of opinion on that, and that's fine, because, I mean, everyone has their own opinion on it, and everyone should but stand up for what they believe in. 
So is it okay? I mean, I, I agree with you. Everybody has a right to their opinion, and I'll defend people's right to have their opinions um, forever. Does that mean that there aren't opinions that are worthy of challenging? Like, for example, if someone thinks, hey, white people are better than brown people, that's my opinion. Is it okay just to let that sit? Uh, well, you know, if they feel that way in, in our country, uh, they, they, they do have the right to say that. But you know what? I didn't. I didn't say anything about. Up. I didn't. No, Tony. Tony, I'm not asking about what they have Maybe a right to. Maybe I misunderstood the question. Uh, yeah, I'm not asking whether or not they have a right. They absolutely. I will say at the outset: in the United States, everyone has the right to be a bigoted piece of shit if they want to. Does that mean? that we don't know what the truth is. If, if it's somebody's opinion that the earth is flat, it, should we not challenge that? Uh, you, have, you have every right to, correct. Yeah, but if they're running around thinking the earth is flat and that white people are better than brown people and that men should have power over women, um, aren't they gonna vote based on those beliefs? And aren't, isn't their vote gonna impact the rest of us? Um, yeah, they're going to definitely vote that way, but will impact the rest of us. It will impact some people, but it will not impact all people. Okay. So right now the Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade, and it's done so because there are a bunch of religious people who have objections to abortion, and that's their religious opinion. But by, by exercising and vocalizing that opinion and then voting on behalf of it, they have now impacted the rights of every person who could potentially become pregnant, whether they share those religious beliefs or not. This is why you can't just say, hey, everybody's entitled to their opinion, because some opinions are wrong. And when you legislate those opinions on others, you impact those people's lives. This is why it matters. That is, that is See, I appreciate, I appreciate where you're at, Tony, but when you do this, Hey, I believe in Jesus. I want to see Jesus someday. You don't believe in Jesus. No big deal. Let's just both live our lives. The difference is that I used to believe in Jesus. I was a fundamentalist Southern Baptist, and there are many people out there who share those views as well. And we voted based on those beliefs, and we made decisions about our lives based on those beliefs. And so there are people who don't seek medical attention for themselves or their kids because they believe that everything comes from God and that God can heal you. There are people who don't believe that other people should have the right to marry the person that they love because they're ostensibly of the same gender or gender identity, et cetera. And so they legislate in ways that prevent that from happening. This is a bunch, this isn't just, hey, I got my opinion, you got yours, let's leave each other alone. This is, I have my opinion. Oh yeah, well, I have my opinion and I'm gonna legislate such that it impacts your life. That happens every day. I understand that, you know, and and the reason so, I actually so wouldn't pulled it be... in because I saw you, I saw you guys were talking about, you know, religion. So I said, you know what, me being, I'm 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 not like one of those guys who like, you know, I'm I'm not one of those guys who's mean to people, or whatever. I'm a nice guy and I'm I'm down to earth. And I said, you know what, let me chime in with my opinion, and you know, have a conversation with you about it, and see, and and, yeah. and you know, and and that's basically it. You know, you know, you know what I mean. But, uh, but... You know, I'm Does not it matter to, what's I'm not, true? I'm not a mean guy, you know. I, I don't think you're a mean guy at all, Tony. I, I, I appreciate you more than any other call we've had today, for sure. But here's the thing. Do you care whether or not what you believe is true, or do you care more about whether or not it's comforting? Uh, honestly, I want to believe it's true. I, like I said, I have, I'm not sure if it's true, but it is definitely... Uh, a comforting because the thing is, you know, I'm not a young guy anymore, and I'm definitely, uh, we'll put it like this, uh, there, there are some fears, uh, you know, so I mean, uh, you know, when the day comes, I do definitely want to, I want to still live something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to still live too, it's just that I care more about what's true and real, and if I allow my preference for a fantasy to impact what I believe, then all of a sudden I will believe things that aren't true and that will impact my life negatively. Right? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, 
there, there's, I don't know if you are if you're familiar. Like it was probably somewhere in the '90s. There was this big saying. It was like all over the place in New York City because I live in New York, right? Uh, it was you got to believe in something, and it was in all the billboards. And and you, if you looked at that, you're like, oh shit, I do got to believe in something because you know what? Maybe maybe you know I'll do the right thing for this guy today. Maybe I'll do the right thing for that guy. Believe in many things, and, you know. Yeah, it's a meaningless I sentence. In, I believe in everything that is demonstrably true. And I and I don't understand how people can willingly believe in something that is not demonstrably true or that may be demonstrably false. Tony, we've got we've got some other calls on and up, and I, I, I do want to move in a second, but I want to give you something to think about, and then I hope you call back again, because I I, I wanted I, I hope we get to discuss with you at some point the real whys you believe it's true when you're actually pursuing caring whether it's true or not. But one of the things that you said early on in the call that stuck out to me is super dark. So this has nothing to do with whether or not your religion is true. It's that you're finding comfort in stuff that if you extend it out is dark as hell. And the specific thing you said was that God is good and you feel blessed because your children have been born healthy. And the extended implication of that is dark as hell because of all of the children who aren't born healthy, all of the children who get cancer and the like. And, and so it's this sort of subjective thing that you were acknowledging when you said that. God is good to me and blesses me, but you can't say he's universally good if when a child is born healthy, which most children just are, but when a child is born healthy, that's God being good and that's God blessing you, unless you're also going to acknowledge when a child is born with a terrible illness or develops cancer, to that person, that's God being a bastard and God being cursing as opposed to blessing. And there's something pretty, it, it's pretty dark what you're saying you're finding comfort in because God doesn't extend that comfort to everyone who even believes in him. Well, you know, one comment I'm going to make about that, uh, you know, I do have a friend who, uh, unfortunately, he uh, he had three kids, and two of them came there, were born with Down syndrome, and uh, he kept them, but he's having a hell of a time raising them, and I just look at him, I'm like, man, if that was me, would I just bounce, you know what I mean? And I believe in Jesus, because I, you know, I mean, I prayed, I prayed, because the time when uh, I have four kids, right? And the first kid uh, that my wife had, at those that time, I was actually using uh, alcohol. I was drinking quite a, quite a bit during, during my first kid, and kid came out normal. So I was I was blessed, you know what I mean? Because I was drinking drinking like every weekend, every other weekend or whatever during when I wasn't working, and the kid came out fine, you know. Yeah, Tony, I just I, I don't I don't know. I, I feel like right now you're more of just sharing a story that the thing reminded you of without engaging in the point which is even the thing that the value that you're getting out of it isn't true except for you can subjectively say my kids were born healthy and i'm going to call that a win which i would call it a win too i'm planning to have a couple of kids myself at this point in life i've changed recently on that uh and uh i i will also call it a win but i'm not going to give it to some external force that rather capriciously applies these blessings and 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 in a very again very dark way curses other people. I don't. I, it, it's something I want you to ponder yeah. on. I guess between now and when you call back with why you believe it's true when your when your assignments of all the reasons God are. What's the last thing you accuse God of being a bastard for doing? If when he does good things, it's a blessings. What was the last thing he cursed you with and was an asshole about? Uh, I don't actually, you know, I mean, in terms of calling him a bastard or asshole, I would never do that. Why? But, you know, I do because I, um, I'm i not that type of guy, you know what I mean? But uh, Would you call any person a bad? If a person came up well, and punched you in the in face. You're not fair in criticism? Right. If someone punched you in the face, is it okay for you to call him a bastard? I just ask for, if it comes, yeah, on the street, absolutely. But okay, and if God gives somebody Jesus, cancer, that's significantly worse than punching someone in the face. So if, if punching someone in the face is worthy of calling them a bastard, so I'm not asking you to call a him a bastard right now, but I am sort of asking when would he be worthy of it at the same level of a random punch in the face. 
Uh, uh, and when's the last time you acknowledge something bad happening as a curse of God? Or do you only assign God the positive things? You only think about the things that are his fault if they're good, if they're quote unquote blessings. And do you absolve him of every terrible, dark and evil thing that are the opposites of the things you've gotten out of him? Uh, I don't really absolve him. Uh, I just follow up with him and say, hey, man, why you do this to me? Can you help me out? And, and, and furthermore, besides that, uh, I don't really you know, call him out his name or anything. I just say, man, you gave me a hard one on this one. Let's try to work this out. You know okay, wait, I mean? wait. Earlier you said God is good because your babies are healthy, right? Yeah, he is good. Okay, is God right. evil if your babies aren't healthy? Uh, that, no, see, that see means- the answer is yes. If, if you're trying to stay consistent... The and God exists. Yeah, I know if I'm staying. The answer is yes. I mean, that could be also just you know you had terrible luck as well. You know what I mean? No, 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 (laughs) no, because that could mean your babies are good, are healthy because you had good luck, and God had nothing to do with it. So you don't get to say God is good if your babies are healthy, but he's it may just be bad luck. If your babies are unhealthy, that's inconsistent, Tony. And again, look, sorry, I'm turning this into a new argument. We have a bunch of calls to get through and then super chats. I want to give you time to think about it, Tony. I really do want you to call back with having thought about it and not just try and I I can acknowledge you've only tried to converse. You've been very good faith this whole time. I'm the one right now getting all worked up and I shouldn't do that. Uh, So, so can can it's two on one. Yeah. Can we just say you'll think about it and you'll call back and we'll have that discussion. Yeah, you know what I mean, listen, there's no reason to get excited about anything, <laughs> sure. anything or whatever. Everything's I disagree, all good. But... And you know what? It was great to talk to you guys, and I want yeah. to wish you a great uh, good Sunday. And there's some uh, baseball on TV. Go always watch that, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what's funny, Tony, is some, the, the screener said uh, that they weren't so sure that your accent was real. New York is home for my family. We're from Levittown. I'm, I'm and as soon as, I heard your, yeah, as soon as I heard your yeah. accent, I was like, oh. He doesn't, our screener doesn't know about Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. By the way, I I don't care about baseball, but I do have a Jackie Robinson rookie card. So if you know somebody who's interested, it's graded and for sale, but thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. All right, guys, you take care of yourself. God bless. See ya. Oh, yeah. See ya. I I doubt it. (laughs) It's one of those things. I'm glad you stopped when you did, because I was, I was like, look, we're, we're just going to keep going and we'll end up, you know, we've had him on here for almost a half an hour. And we're yeah. kind of beating up on him. And I skipped over the thing that you wanted to address uh, intentionally because it was, I'm, I'm not knocking you by all means. It was great to address it and it led to some great revelations, but it's yeah. like, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm trying to peacefully direct towards conclusions. And I knew if I jumped in on that, I would not be able to maintain myself because when yeah. you say, oh, God made it so all my kids come out healthy. Oh, does that mean that the kids that don't come out healthy is god tormenting those people or you know are you just cherry picking you know this but it's like ah you're convinced that because your kids came out okay that you're right with god and god did something for you god did you a solid Uh, i'm even speaking more brooklyn the longer i'm on the phone with him which is oh yeah my my accent comes out when i get going but it, it shows up but yeah but it's like um the 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 very notion i mean i think we're 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 most on the same page i just don't understand how someone can say here's a proposition and i have no way of telling if it's true or not but i'm convinced it's true because if you say that with regard to the lottery ticket he gets it if you say that with regard to you know baseball he gets it as soon as you say that about god he doesn't get it and it's the same way that you demonstrated this when it's like, okay, if God, if, if something good happens in your life and you're like, oh, God, you're wonderful. At what point does it become okay when something bad happens to say, God, you're a bastard? It's all special pleading. The God belief is protected from criticism so that it's a win-win scenario only. You can only say good things about God when he does good things. And by the way, the Bible goes a step further, which is to praise God in all things, including the bad things. And yeah. so if your kids... If your kids come out deformed um, and and broken, physically just unable to survive, you're supposed to thank God for that too. Yeah. Um, not not every denomination holds to that. This, I I, I really I, I'm not going to thank God for it, Tony, but 
I'm appreciative that there are theists who can still call in and say, you know what, here's what I think. Um, and I don't know why it's a big deal. And yeah. then when you talk about why it's a big deal, they're like, oh, maybe, maybe it's a bigger deal than I thought. I, I would like it to be true, but you know, the truth is it's comforting and maybe I believe it cause it's comforting. And that's, I mean, I don't, I don't know. There's much more I could ask for in any single phone call. Yeah. To, to get somebody yeah. to just say, okay, let me, let me reduce my confidence perhaps a bit. Sure. I'm going to, I'm going to pick this one in and make short work of it. Uh, uh, I, I can almost assure you. Uh, and then I'll we'll, we'll jump into the regular. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It won't take that long. Uh, Joel in Arkansas. Let me tell you what's going to happen here. We're going to hang up on your call in about a minute, but I'm going to tell you why beforehand. Uh, we sure. have had this channel for three years. We've done the work to develop the audience. Right now, there are 2,200 people watching. And when you call hey, our guys. show, we set the rules. And so your whole, sure. I'm not going to play the pronouns game thing, you can call back yeah. the week you okay. can't, you want to, because that's how it works. So we're not taking you today. You've come in on our rules. We share our audience and our platform with you on our terms, well, I, not I didn't on have yours. I'm not, I, 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 wasn't, I, I wasn't planning to give you a chance to speak, just to listen. So that's why I hung up there. If you're going to, if you're going to antagonize and be shitty to our, our call screeners, you can very much go fuck yourself. I don't care if that means we never get a call ever again. Those aren't the terms that we're doing this goddamn show on. Fuck off. Call back on a week when you recognize that this is not your show and you don't set the rules. For, for clarity, uh, it might be worthwhile to give a, a bit more, like, what, what did he, did he just like refuse to give pronouns or did he make a stink about yes. the so, pronoun thing? First made a fight about it uh, uh, with the screener and then gave what are evidently not his pronouns as the way of saying, I'm not going to play the pronoun uh. game. So here are the wrong ones. Uh, uh, but, but more than anything, the, the screener had let me know that he was very hostile to the screener and I don't fuck with that. The wow. screeners are yeah, volunteers. Yeah. That, yeah. In, th in that case, I'm not even the slightest bit concerned about, uh, pronoun stuff at all. Yeah. You don't find we, uh, uh, Joel, uh, uh, the, the, not Joel, the call before Joel, uh, I'm so bad at remembering names from two minutes ago, Tony. Uh, also didn't give pronouns, but we didn't harp on him about it. I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask Tony in the future of like, hey, man, just do it. Uh, it was the antagonization that, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to fucking abide. Anyway, um, looking at the lines, do you have an order you want? Remembering we probably want to reserve 20 to 30 minutes for reading the su your birthday super chats. Oh, I'm probably Frank more than. Cool. Frank in California, you are on the line. Hey guys, I like your show. I think you guys make a good team there. No, oh, thanks. So uh, thanks, I want to share quick, some Frank. of my life. Frank, Frank, real quick. Yeah. Hey, I don't know why this has been happening on some calls lately. It's once or twice a show. If you'll just move your microphone a little bit away from your face, you're coming in like somebody's, like okay. someone's putting your voice through a blender. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. All right, it's away. Is that better? It's still it's still clipping a little bit, but uh, uh, yeah, as long as you as long as you're holding it away, we'll see if we can handle it. Worst case scenario, we might try. Every now and then, we usually say don't do speakerphone, but every now and then with this issue, we switch to speaker and it's fine. But let's let's try it as is. Go on. All right, let me know. Mm -hmm. All right, I'd like to put some of my life on the line here. Uh, let's see, I've been pretty much of a YouTube junkie lately, a um, couple of years, I guess, and mostly. Uh, psychology, dark psychology, atheism. I uh, even ran into Jesus by accident once or twice. And anyway, I I just hear there's so many connections that I'm seeing between these all. Um, how can I say this here? Um, basically, people are hanging on to something like we all we're all born with empathy. You know, we have that muscle, but we, we don't use it. We choose not to use it. We don't use it. it. It's small. If we build up our empathy, we come up, I think, in our society with uh, morals. We come up with our own morals. We don't need outside help for that. What I'm trying to get at here is uh, 
what do you guys think as far as the connections between just basic psychology and all these religions and cults and people taking advantage of you know their subordinates and, and all that? I, I mean, obviously we don't. Yeah, man, I'm just confused. Frank, did you did you misspeak? You told the screener you were a theist, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So I guess I'm just confused. But you want to know you want to know how we feel about people using religion to uh, basically manipulate people, right? Yeah. It's, well, okay. Think about it. We feel like, like we feel person. like we should spend a significant portion of our week every week fighting against that. It is the core of our activism and and what we're literally doing. It's why you and I are talking right now. Uh, it's why Matt will be talking. You could call him again on Wednesday on this channel. He'll do debates. I'll keep doing things that, you know, boost my ego also, but also we feel motivated to fight against uh, the very thing that you're describing. Why do you, Frank, believe yeah. in God? I just wanted to answer the question quickly and see if we can get there. I don't know if I believe in God or not. I mean, is okay. that what theist means? Theist would mean something. yes. Yes. I just don't, I just don't know what. What does something yeah. mean to you? And, and if we can, let's go ahead and try the switch well, to speakerphone because I think you've naturally probably, it happens, you've naturally probably brought uh, the mic okay. back. Let's see if switching to mic, yeah. if the speaker works better. All right, hold on. Yeah. All right. Uh, I lost where I was at. Go ahead and pick it up, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, oh man, the echo's real bad. Let's just let's pick it up another day, or if you want to try calling in from uh, from the web caller next time, maybe let's uh, let's try that, Frank. But yeah, these but unfortunately both are too frustrating. Uh, but yeah, just to give you a summary, theist would mean you believe in a god. We'd probably talk about what you mean by you believe that there's something, because obviously Matt and I believe in some many some things, uh, just well, nothing supernatural. My my faith is in humanity. We're gonna make it through. But that's not faith. We're gonna find up a whole. Well, whatever it is. Oh. That's what I got. That's a colloquial type of faith. You're confident that humanity, because of patterns in the past, of them being able to emerge against greater evils and, and bad things with better technology, better science, better understanding, and better displays of empathy, even though we cycle back, Definitely. you believe that will emerge and do that again. Faith uh, uh, in the religious sense, which we're usually just engaging on so this I show. So I should stick with, with atheists then. Uh, so I should stick with atheists. You could say, yeah, you're a pragmat. You're an atheist with a lot of humanism and pragmatism and optimism. There's a lot of labels that would describe you, but if you don't believe in God, theist isn't one of them. Okay, I got you. Gotcha. Now I know. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm I'm Thanks, gonna sir. hang up. No worries. Uh, all right. I guess I guess we do this one, but I'm going to ask, I, I'll ask the first question and then I'll let you just have it. Cause I don't care about, I, I don't care to do it today if, um, unless you do, but, uh, I have one question for Jacob in Nevada, Jacob in Nevada. You're on the line. How are you? How's it going? It's going all right. Hey Jacob, are you aware that on Thursdays we do a show called the transatlantic call in show where people who have questions about trans issues can call and gender would certainly break, uh, uh, be into there, uh, uh, can call and talk to actual people who, for whom the stakes are highest, who it affects, uh, uh, who are activists, who are experts, and can discuss with them things like today's topic, you've come in with how gender is determined on a show that while obviously Matt and I will take this topic on, on many of our other shows, Sunday, the Sunday show is pretty historically about spirituality, religion, and the like. Uh, can I just ask you to call on Thursday, or is there some reason you'd like to engage specifically the two of us? I'm, I'm actually uh, out of town on Thursday. I'm actually going to be on it's the a, road. It's an every Thursday so thing, call. my guy. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll call in wait, during that wait, show. Wait, wait, um, wait. Jacob, I have both of you guys on. is this thoughtful faith? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, I've been my you guys goodness. Online. It's thoughtful faith. Jacob, I'm wait. so glad to hear from you. Who's thoughtful faith? <laughs> the guy that uh, was giving you shit for uh, for disagreeing or for pointing out that Gad Sad's a, a problem with first the pronouns thing. Yeah, I'm, he deducted. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on team. Jake, I'm on team. I'm on team Gad Sad more yeah. so. so that's on, fine, Jake, on Jacob. The, Jacob the is. Issue, know what but, you're talking but I about. I was, I one was, second, Jacob. One I second, was, Jacob. Jacob. One sec. One sec. One sec. I don't know. 
Yeah, one I don't second. know what you're talking about. I have had no conversations about GADSAT at all. Jacob was who deducted you 30 point IQ points for listing your pronouns. Yeah, oh, because my me. pronouns are in my bio, you decided that reduced my IQ by 30. Well, let me tell you, Jacob, yeah. we could reduce it by 70 <laughs> and I'd still smoke you. All yeah. right. Sounds good. I'm, I'm just curious how uh, I, I want to understand the nature of this sort of gender and how, how you know, one even determines their gender. Um, I mean, you guys obviously care a lot about these. How do you determine when you're hungry? Part of your show. How do you determine when you're hungry? How do I determine my biology? What do you mean your biology? My, Is there some chromosomal my, thing that, my, that my, determines your hunger? Uh, my biological systems will indicate to me that I'm hungry. Sure. So basically what you're saying is that there's a psychological state that you identify as hunger. Okay. So, so you're saying that psychological states, some brain state, would determine a person's gender. No, that's not what I said at all. Why is it that I can ask you questions and instead of just answering them and having the conversation, you immediately want to go to making another assertion? Well, I'm trying to understand you? what you mean when you're, well, when you're saying if, that. If you're trying to understand, then instead of going running towards the conclusion that you think that you want, we should just talk about the actual issue here. I had other questions, for example. Um, how do you tell what someone's job is? If they tell you that they're a teacher, how do you know if they're telling the truth or not? You could go and see what they do and get paid for. Can you? How do you do that? Yeah, if I wanted to verify like, what someone's job is, I could go you, you and don't, let's you, say someone no, no, says they're no, a I'm school saying, teacher. No, I could no, go and see on. if that's what they're actually let doing. Let me, my God. You're, let's say you're on a bus and you're sitting next to someone and they say, I'm a teacher. Do you have any, any motivation at all to go investigate them? Or do you just take their word for it that they're a teacher? I might take someone's word for it, but that doesn't mean that that's what they are. Someone could say that they're a, they're a dragon or that they're a, I, that they're a, a yes, unicorn. Congratulations, congratulations, Jacob. Once again, I've asked a question, and once again, you've gone off stampeding in a different direction. Did I say that that means that it's correct? Okay, go ahead. No, no, I asked you a question. Did I say that that means it's correct? No, you didn't. So Then why did you suggest that I did? <laughs> okay, so a person, I, if I want to find out what a person believes... Why did you suggest says, that I did? Um, because I think you're drawing at the conclusion... That what a person, did you suggest that I did? When you acknowledge gender, now that I didn't say that, why did you suggest that I did? I don't know why. I do. Okay, go ahead and tell me. No. So, if somebody says that they're a teacher, generally speaking, you're going to take their word for it. The follow-up question was, does that mean they actually are a teacher? And you've already answered that. No, it doesn't. See how much easier this is if you just answer the question that you're asked instead of thinking that you're smarter than the person you're talking to when you're not? <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. So, if so, a, now, so, so, what's you've, the, so, so now so you've got here. someone, and now, now someone comes up to you, you're sitting, sitting next to them on a bus, and they say, hi, my name's Bob. This person sitting next to me is Steve. He's a school teacher. What's wrong? What, what, is there anything in that that is objectionable? No. Do you know that Steve or Bob are actually their real names? No. Do you know that the gender of either of them? Um, generally, by looking at a person, there are things that you can tell that, you know, no, suggest so you're not paying that you're attention. a male or a female. Yeah, what I said was, Bob said, this is Steve, he's a teacher. Okay. Does that mean that Steve is being represented as a man? With the he pronoun? No, but if I, if I, was, if I was looking at someone... So, so, no, 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 no. Would, stop, Jacob. If somebody said, this is Steve, he is a teacher, you don't think he's being represented as a man? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is being represented, man, because he's using a, yeah. a male pronoun. Pay the fuck attention. I, I went through this pronoun thing three times already. So Bob says to you, this is Steve. He's a teacher. And because of that, you now know someone's pronouns. When you are sitting there talking to Steve, are you going to call Steve Steve? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Are you, are you going to ask Steve for his driver's license or birth certificate? Are you going to ask Steve for his driver's license or birth? Are you going to ask Steve? Are you going to ask Steve for his driver's license? Are you going to ask Steve? Just so you know, I can put your ass on mute, which I will now. Well, that's what going his to ask hack Steve? of a father would do on his radio show. I don't know if you saw yeah. his. Are you going to that. ask Steve? Are you going to ask Steve for his fucking birth certificate or driver's license before you just call him Steve? That's all I was asking. I'll unmute you now. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Go ahead. Cool. And if you were talking to Bob and you wanted to reference Steve, and Steve had just said, yeah, I'm a teacher in a New York school. And Bob said, uh, my friend Steve here is a teacher in a Pittsburgh school. Would you say, he just said, it's a New York school. W is that how you would address him? No. It isn't? Y you, you wouldn't say, he just said this? No, I, I mean, I'd be fine with him if he said that. Like, I don't have any problem with it. No, no, no. I'm saying, wow, you, you are incapable of listening for, for clarity. So Steve said, I teach in a New York school. Bob says, okay. Steve teaches in a Pittsburgh school. Would you then say to Bob, he just said he teaches in a, in a New York school? No. I, 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 I wouldn't. I, I'd, believe what, I'd believe what they told me. Oh, my God. Here. <sighs> It's, yeah, maybe we should deduct 90 IQ points. Steve said, oh, I teach in a New York school. And Bob said, Steve teaches in a Pittsburgh school. Would you then look at Bob and say, he just said he teaches in a New York school. Would that be a reasonable thing for you to say? Well, Steve says he teaches in a New York school. And Bob Jesus says Christ. that Steve teaches in a Pittsburgh school. And would you look at Bob and say, he just said he teaches in a New York school? Yeah, I would. I'd look at Bob and say, okay, cool. yeah, he, he, you know, now we've he established, teaches in a New York school, so we should believe now that. We've established, now we've established that you're willing to take Bob and Steve at their word on what their names are on what their gender is, on what their pronouns are, and that you would refer to them respectfully without investigating their, their uh, genome, without knowing what their chromosomes are, without investigating gametes, without looking at a driver's license, without looking at a passport. Good job. Now, you know what you need to know about gender, which is from your perspective, for anything that you need to interact with, for anything that makes any difference to you, what they tell you is what it is. Thanks for calling. Wait. So Wait, nothing. Yeah. I am tired of walking you carefully to the obvious observation after you decided to make fucking jokes about people's IQ. I don't even give a shit about IQ. Uh, it's, a, it's an example of how good you are at taking IQ tests. But the fact that you smugly decided that because I have pronouns in my bio, that this somehow reduces me 30 IQ points and you're just going to sit around and laugh and ha 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 while you're advocating for Mormonism or some other bullshit and Mormonism. pretending that you don't know how gender works when in your entire life, everyone you've ever met, you have treated them with respect and talked to them by their name and used their preferred pronouns without challenging thing until it became fucking convenient for you to do it on Twitter as a way of showing what an ignorant fucking bigot you are because you really want to say that you are the arbiter of what somebody else's gender are, and you're not. You never will be. You are a bigoted piece of shit. Thanks for calling. There was, uh, uh, he, Jacob recently likes to make and did one during the show, tweets about how the opposition to his trans views hates science uh, and, and had, had posted that while we were on air about somebody else talking about trans issues. And I find it very, very funny, coming from Mormonism, that this advocate for Mormon, for Mormonism, 
who believes that Jesus Christ teleported to America once while he was alive and once while he was dead, once in ghost form, once in live form, uh, during his whole, uh, uh, during that whole period of time where he is being crucified, that he's also teleporting back and forth to America, uh, and believes that the ancient genealogy, and by ancient I mean two, 2,600 years, of uh, current day, modern day indigenous people to America, the Native Americans, if you will, are 2,600 years ago, uh, basically one family and some friends from Jerusalem, that they are ancient Jews. These sorts of things that you can examine with uh, uh, DNA evidence. Uh, and then that, that turned into millions and millions of people, many of whom murdered each other. In fact, multi-millions of casualties in a single war in a single location of which there is no evidence. But anyway, the Mormon thinks that the people who accept trans identities, which by the way, are affirmed by science. Yeah. The Mormon thinks that, that people like us hate science. It's yeah. uh, it's this a all tremendous started, thing. by the way, this all started by the way, because Jacob made a, a tweet about how impressive it was for Joseph Smith to interpret the Bible or to interpret the Book of Mormon um, from the through the seer stones because the the Book of Mormon is so complex and if people understood how complex it was they'd be amazed and I tweeted back at him they'd be even more amazed when they realized that there's no such language as Reformed Egyptian um, you believe that Joseph yeah. Smith translated from a language that doesn't fucking exist yeah. Yeah, and not to mention, and this is a good point to plug, uh, we're going to take one more call and then do Matt's birthday Super Chats, uh, any of $10 or more. And then after that, I'm going to head over. Well, we will read another chapter or two from the books of, I think we're in the book of Jacob, actually, ironically right now, uh, over to Aaron Ra's channel. We are chapter by chapter reading the Book of Mormon. Uh, and it isn't complex. Nice. It is incoherent, obviously fraudulent nonsense. Uh, and we actually have somebody there who has, I wonder how impressed Jake, the, the, the caller Jacob would be if he actually saw the structure and how good the original writing was. Cause we do have one person who actually brings that first edition with him. The one that has no verses, no punctuation, and the word problems are even more stupid. Uh, so anyway, don't miss us watching the book of Mormon or reading the book of Mormon over on Aaron Ross channel. Uh, but before we do that, we have Chris from LA who wants to debate on the definition of faith. Uh, and oh I don't know why, cause they're just, anyway, go on, Chris. So Chris has an Hello. objection to my definition of faith. Before we yeah. start, my definition of faith is this faith is the excuse people give for believing things when they don't have a good reason. What's your objection? Yeah. And my objection is that, um, Having a good reason is what they should do, and it's not a description of what is. And so, in my estimation, it's smuggling in an ought where it is ought to be. There, there's no, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to walk me through this a little cl more clearly because I gave okay. a definition. So, I, and hang on, hang on. I, I, I could give a hang the fuck on. Do you know what hang yes, on sir. means? I gave a definition. You accuse me of having a flawed definition because it smuggles in an ought where an is should be. The ought from an is problem would only be the case if I was presenting an argument, not a definition. I'm saying that faith is the label that we put onto people who are giving, uh, who, who don't have a good reason. If you have a good reason, you give the good reason. What is it that you're saying is wrong with how I'm describing how faith is used. I would suggest that faith is what happens when people cease to withhold judgment in absence of evidence sufficient to justify a conclusion backed by deductive reasoning. Faith is what happens when people cease to withhold judgment in absence of a conclusion backed by deductive reasoning. An absence so of a conclusion? They appeal to oh my a God, conclusion stop. backed stop. by... Okay, so I what I said... Please, go ahead. 
what I said was that faith is the excuse people give for believing something when they don't have a good reason. Because if you have a good reason, you give the good reason. And what you said is faith is what happens, so already it's in the wrong category, but faith is what happens when people cease to withhold judgment, which means people believe something, withholding just judgment is not believing it. So your definition is what happens when people cease to withhold judgment, ceasing to withhold judgment is to accept a position, which is believing them, in the absence of a conclusion backed by deductive reasoning. So your definition is what happens when people believe something without a good reason. You literally just rewrote my definition of faith and made it more fucking complicated. And you limited it to deductive reasoning. Stop talking. You limited it to deductive reasoning. Are you suggesting that people can't have reasonable positions based on inductive reasoning or abductive reasoning? Is that what you're saying? I would suggest that those positions are faith-based. Okay. Well, in any case... If people appeal to abduction or induction, I would would suggest that they're appealing to faith. So what you're saying is that deductive reasoning is the only good reasoning? In a way, yes, sir. Okay, so in a way, what you're saying is faith is what happens when people believe things in the absence of the only good reason. Uh, I, I think that is a not unfair description of my position. Yes, sir. Which is identical to mine. It's just whether or not I want to limit good reasoning uh, and expand on it to have a separate discussion about whether or not deductive reasoning is there. The next time you want to challenge well, me on it's something, more, it's more make concise. sure you know what my position is and that your position isn't fucking identical with different words. I do. Goodbye. I mean, I think it's a fair. Goodbye. Matt's just real excited for these super chats. I, I am, but also I have to pee. But oh, I yeah, literally... Yeah. I spent ages looking at how people actually use the word faith. Yeah. You're looking at Hebrews 11.1, 1, looking at what people say. And when you say, yeah, that thing, thank you, Ilya, that's perfect. We, I think that's a not unfair way of assessing what I said. And not unfair means fair. Uh, when you cease to withhold judgment, that means you're assenting to a position, which is belief. When you're doing it, in the absence without a conclusion backed by deductive reasoning a good reason yeah you're saying that faith is what happens and i say faith is the excuse they give when people believe without a good reason you've literally said the exact fucking same thing that i did but because once again you think you've seen further oh i'm going to challenge you on your definition you're not challenging shit other than whether or not deductive reasoning is the only good reasoning. Meanwhile, all of science is inductive reasoning. All of science is inductive reasoning. So your definition just threw out all of (laughs) science as not good reasoning. Stop thinking you've got a handle on this and actually pay attention. See, I've seen you call yourself pedantic before, and I've always thought, you you must have such a high standard for pedantry because the call we just got is pedantic as fuck. Uh, yeah. uh, and I, I don't find you close to that standard. I, anyway. I try to make things approachable because that's what made it easier for me. Yeah, go get your pee on uh, or out, I suppose, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back to this uh, when you're back. Yes, you, you, why don't you give everybody an update on what's going on on the line in the coming week and all that stuff, and I'll be right back. Sounds great. Okay. That, uh, uh, the, the thing where you just saw him transition several times, I wasn't expecting him to speak, and if it finished its transition, his mic would have cut, and so I was hitting it several times so you could, you could all, 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 all hear him. Yeah, uh, this week on the line, that's a good question and something that I had the schedule up for. And apparently, for almost four hours later, three and a half hours later, whatever it is, uh, decided I didn't need it anymore, which was silly on my point. I do know that this Tuesday, David Fitzgerald uh, and I will be discussing the Mormons. If Jacob wants to call in with some specific Mormon assertions, that would be uh, that would be the day for that. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, and then on this coming Monday. Shannon Q is joined by the creator called Fanatic. 
Uh, and Matt Dillahunty will be joined by Kenneth Leonard on this Wednesday. And then Katie Montgomery with a to be determined co-host uh, will be returning for the transatlantic call in show. Don't forget. You can go to patreon.com slash call the line and support this channel on Patreon. We have a lot of ambitious goals for this year's year and things that we would like to get done. Also, today's sponsor, we had a sponsored episode for the very first time, adamandeve.com. Use the code line at checkout for 50% off one item. And then other than that, uh, I don't I don't have much else except for these super chats to run through after the show. Don't forget, you can come and join me reading the Book of Mormon with R and Ra. Do you feel lighter? I I don't hear a thing you're saying. Is this no, my fault? I, I don't oh, feel right. I don't feel lighter. I uh, well, you're at least a few ounces lighter. I always, whenever Probably. I'm keeping track of my weight, I always weigh in after I pee, like it matters some significant amount. Uh, we'll start with twenty. Well, I guess we'll go back and forth. Twenty from uh, Heisen. Happy birthday, Matt! You old fart. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Here's one for you. Ten dollars from Tyres Tiersen. Ooh, sorry. Is it conceptually possible to prove the supernatural? What would that preview look like? Isn't it like asking for a photo of an invisible man? So we went through all this, but this might have come in before. Um, is it conceptually possible to prove the supernatural? I don't know. Um, is it conceptually possible that the supernatural exists? Yes, only because conceptually possible just means it hasn't been shown to be impossible. Um, so I guess similarly, you could say that it's conceptually possible to prove the supernatural, but the only thing that matters is not whether it's conceptually possible, but whether that's possible in reality. And so I don't know what that proof would look like because we don't know what the nature of supernature is. Also so like asking for a photo of an invisible man. No, not necessarily, but I get the, I get the reference. Uh, and I was going to say, we actually convert invisible parts of the spectrum of light to the visible spectrum for different types of tests all the time. There's lots of things that are invisible that we can't see because invisible refers to human inability to see things on a certain spectrum during in a certain spectrum of light. Uh, and we actually do convert invisible things to visible. So the very specific thing that you just asked for potentially wouldn't be supernatural in the first place. And you could do, you could take a picture of an invisible man potentially because they don't have the same limitations as our eyes. $20 from Paul Baxter. Matt, well done. You survived another year. Do so again. That's from Paul. To tell you the truth, I kept the wig on because I keep this room very cold and the warmth of the wig became pleasant. Now I was like, all right, I'll just, I'll just stick to the bit. Here's one for you. 9.99 pounds, British pounds, pounds sterling. Although I don't, don't think they're sterling anymore. From Steve Cross. I hope you have a very happy birthday, Matt. Thank you. I, I hope to. One, one thing is we haven't really talked about the details. I've got to get uh, some video stuff done over the next couple of days, and we're we've got some snake pairings to do and some other cleanup and prep work around the house. But I think on Friday, and Jimmy, if you're free, um, we're talking about going to the Museum of Illusions which is on a limited tour in Austin, followed by uh, driving some K1 indoor go-karts. That sounds awesome. So Hell if you yeah. want to go, come, come spend Friday with us. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't anybody else take that advice uh, who's watching. Uh, but other than that, yeah. The only thing I don't love about what you just said is you told people where we'd be. Uh, I, didn't tell I, them, I didn't tell them exactly where we'd be or at what times. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, don't 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 try and meet us there. Is all I'm going to add to that. I instead I you to. can meet us at the next community gathering dinner exactly. just as soon as we announce it, which will be very soon. I'm sure. Uh, that's a great yeah. That's a great point too. We do have a meetup. Link should be in the description. Uh, Katie Looney says happy early birthday, but I discovered I'm happy I discovered we have the same birthday. But sadly, my birth year is it as cool as yours. That's true. That's right. That's true. Whenever Matt's birthday comes up around people, uh, uh, I always ask him to share with them the year. But if you don't know, then you don't know. It's the best year you could imagine it being, though. This one's for you. 999 from NA Zone 75. Happy birthday, Matt. You can, you've had a huge impact on my deconstructing my faith. Oh, thanks so much for saying so. 
I appreciate that. $40. I'm actually, I'm, I'm working on a little text overlay right now for fun. Excellent. $40 from I Got Cookies. Happy birthday to someone I've known for many years, but only recently got to know better. I hope you have a wonderful 40th birthday and keep fighting the good fight. Hey, if somebody, uh, if somebody uh, asks for it, if somebody super chats $50 with the request, I'll, uh, I'll read a, 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 a Donald Trump style tweet as written by chat GPT in my shitty Trump impression. But someone's got to, you never do it for free. Someone sends a $50, uh, by the way, I've already asked chat GP to generate it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So a, D a Dillahunty style tweet, uh, sorry, a Trump style tweet about Matt Dillahunty. Um, yeah, that's the good stuff. All right, here's one for you. 1999 from Batch Tech. What a great price to say, Jimmy, go F Jimmy. Uh, you've both been inspirational to me. Uh-oh, I complimented Jimmy. So Jimmy, go F Jimmy again. <laughs> It all works. I got an easy one. 90, 90, $9.99 from Kurt. Okay. Kurt said $9.99. Thank you, Kurt. Here's for you. $10 from Pearl and Nanner. Pearl yeah. Nanner. One. Happy birthday, Matt. Stay healthy and awesome for many years to come. Your mission is bringing actual fruits. Jimmy, from the bottom of my heart, go fuck yourself totally. Hell yeah. Y'all, for the record, you don't have to add a it's Matt's birthday. I'm not one of the kids that'll feel like I need a present if Matt's getting presents. <laughs> you, can just, you can just say happy birthday to Matt. You don't have to add me in there. But anyway, $20 from CR. Happy birthday, Matt. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Listen up, you motherfuckers. He actually said that at a campaign speech. Anyway, this one's for you. Ten dollars from James Call. Happy birthday, Matt. I've been listening to you for 16 plus years. Thank you. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Uh, I'm experimenting with something. And give me a second here, Jimmy, because this is okay. This is not gonna work, but I'm gonna I'm gonna transition my image. Because I want to be able to actually put text up on the screen. Yeah. And that way when I'm sitting here taking notes. So like if another call comes in like before. I have a graphic I can put up that can say, okay, my definition of faith is the excuse for believing without good evidence. And if you transform believing into ceasing to withhold judgment, if you transform without into in the absence of, and good evidence into deductive reasoning, what you get is faith, in, faith is ceasing to withhold judgment in the absence of a conclusion from deductive reasoning. Uh, it's just wild that... Um, I, 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 I get it. Sometimes people don't see what I'm writing down and taking notes on, or they're not able to follow the, the language thing. I want to be able to get those up uh, much better, but yeah. I failed. Yeah. Oh, someone tried to write the tweet. The tweet is not kind. The one that, uh, the one that is about that the chat GPT tweet written like it's Trump is not a kind tweet for the person who, uh, who said that they wanted that they were trying. Uh, anyway, 1999 from Harsh Chada. Happy birthday, Matt. I really admire what you do and how much you've taught me about skepticism and rationality. Love from St. Louis. Fuck you, Jimmy. Two Corinthians. I, had, I might have added the two Corinthians part. Nothing wrong with two Corinthians. Two Corinthians. All right, this one's for you. $10 from Rose Red. Hi, Rose. Happy birthday, Matt. Hope you're enjoying it. And maybe I'll bump into you at Reptile Expo this year. Yes, we just missed each other um, at two, two expos ago. We're going to one in Fort Worth um, Saturday. So, yeah, here I am telling people where to see me again. Yeah. I'll be at a Reptile Expo Saturday. If you can figure out which one, come up and say hi. I, and it's I happened. Know, I know you don't mind. I just, it, I, I am so socially awkward and anxious that, yeah, just the idea that, and I've also been, uh, we'll just say stalked a couple of times since starting sure. this whole thing. And so it's, Nobody yeah. stalks me. I will say this: If you come up and you and you see me out in public, um, feel free to say hi. I don't don't do. I can't count the number of times somebody's like, "Oh, I saw you at thus and so, and I didn't want to interrupt you." Or, or say, yeah. it's fine. Just say hi and move on. Because sometimes I'll see people looking at me, and it's like, you know, do they recognize me, or if I got like a booger hanging, or <laughs> or what? Yeah. And I can't tell. But it's like somebody recognized me at um, Clay Pot the other day. It was nice. And if Jimmy happens to be with me when you recognize me, just ignore him. 
I, I don't mind a hi. Uh, don't try and hug me, please. I don't, I don't really, it takes me a while to warm up to hugging my friends. So please don't try and hug me. Uh, please don't be offended if I interrupt and just try to elbow bump you. Uh, but the best, I, the best I ever got was I was just passing a guy in a grocery store and he saw me and he double took and he went, fuck yeah. And then just moved on. And I, that was amazing. That was the best, that was the best moment for me ever. Uh, cause I can, there's even a little bit of doubt that that's what he was saying. Maybe he just really liked my hair, but I think he recognized me and fuck. Yeah. was the, just the best anyway, uh, from Rose, Red way, Art, go on. Oh, I read that one. Oh, okay. I, I, read. I read roses. Um, also I'm going to, I'm going to show everybody something. Uh, this wasn't a birthday gift, but it was a gift, um, from somebody who came to the, the meetup that we had at the Indian restaurant, um, I think I've shown this before. This is a clock. Oh, that's cool. And it's a great edge. Like I, I know it's an hour wrong because it's been sitting here on my desk and I haven't gone in to look at the instructions or to load it into my app. It's doing color changing thing, which is impacting. It's a green screen stuff. Um, but I love this little clock, even though it doesn't show the correct time right now. Um, and it's one of those things that somebody brought or, or sent to me after meeting them at our meetup. And I, I'm not good with getting gifts, but that one I really like. And so if you have an interest, uh, even though this wasn't a, a paid av advertisement or anything else, it's Foxy Clocks, F-O-X-I-E. You can find them. Though a reminder, today's episode was sponsored by Adam and Eve, and we probably it was. aren't supposed to promo other stuff. But I If don't, you need your... I was going to do a fake advertisement for Adam and Eve right now, and then I realized I have no idea what the agreement is or what I'm supposed to say or not supposed to say. So I'm just going to say Jimmy did an ad for them at the yeah. at the top of the show. It's Good sex deal. toys. I mean, we're, we're far enough in the show now that we don't have to worry as much about consequences. Sex toys, lingerie, 50% off uh, one item. Okay, they're not going to watch this far, so I'm not worried that this will get us in trouble either. Uh, you can use the code over and over again. You just have to do it one transaction at a time, but I'm not supposed to technically say that. So don't tell anyone. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Michael Gould says, happy birthday, Matt. Jimmy, go fuck yourself. So much violence today. I feel like I should be doing a voice. 999 from Nicholas. I'm a lifelong atheist, been sober in AA for 36 years. There were a lot of atheists in AA. We are not the majority, but we are there. Yeah, and I wish that uh, you didn't have to be there. I wish that we would recognize that um, AA, and by the way, if AA is what's keeping someone sober, cool, keep working the program. Um, I would much rather have you sober and somewhat delusional than you know continuing to suffer from substance abuse, substance addiction. But the fact of the matter is um, Alcoholics Anonymous is awful. They hide their recidivism rates. Uh, yes, you can have anything be your higher power, and I know there's plenty of atheists in the system, um, but I think it replaces one addiction with another, and I, do, and I don't like the fact that it says you are helpless, that you need a higher power. Um, I think it diminishes human value, but you know what? For anybody that has helped, good for them. Yeah, I broke addiction without anything even resembling AA. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of it either. Really good episode of John Oliver on it, if people want some more information on it. Uh, by the way, everybody, Matt just said he was going to put on a voice, but in reality what he did is he dropped his performance voice and did his actual natural voice. Everybody who knows Matt in real life knows that that voice he just did is his real Texas accent. It's very genuine. That's what he sounds like all the time, <laughs> except when he's on Especially air. Especially since I'm not from Texas and nobody from Texas sounds like that. That's closer <laughs> to a Tennessee accent. It was a fun meme for while it lasted. Twenty dollars from Fat Man Eats You says I left religion and theism behind before YouTube was a thing, but I've always had trouble articulating my thoughts. Matt, your co your command of debates and of English is reaffirming. Thank you for what you do. Happy birthday. Thank you, Fat Man Eats You. Hell yeah! This one's yours. Nine ninety nine from the Raven two hundred. Also to whomever's birthday it is, happy birthday. I'm not gonna sing it, but happy birthday, happy birthday, sun and sorrows fill the air. Ooh, I got that wrong. Happy birthday, happy birthday, sun and sorrow fills the air. People dying everywhere. But happy birthday, happy birthday. Is that a song I should know? Because it seems so awful familiar. Does it sound like Enya? Okay. I, it's not registering with me. Yeah, I feel like it's like... Somebody somebody in chat's already called you out 
pointing out that I'm from Missouri and Austinites don't really have an accent. So yes. Yeah. Not, not from Texas. You, you, you discovered the secret. I, uh, it's interesting that Missouri is similar to, cause I don't, I, I have accents when I'm around family from places I've been or like when Brooklyn guy comes on, the New York accent starts to reemerge. But I, but other than that, I, uh, uh, I can't trace my voice to anything. I just think I sound absurd all the time. Uh, 15 Cal uh, Canadian from Mike B. Happy birthday, Matt. Enjoy the plastic rainbow, buddy. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Love the show. Of course, you'd say that with your Canadian dollars. Okay, those Justin Trudeau coupons. Okay, is what you're bringing. That's what you would say. Here's another for you. you. Even, like you can't even do folds in in their plastic money. So like <laughs> half the magic tricks that I used to do with money, um, which I could have done with older Canadian money, can't do it with that anymore. You'd have to you do a stack kill off and magic just do, in Canada. Just do card tricks with them. That's all you got left. That one's for you. Ten dollars from Tarson again. I'm Nick. Ah, had to had to do go work. Had to do go work, but rewatched my call. I was wrong. Matt's answer was a valid response to my question, but Jimmy and I got lost in the weeds when he brought up religious claims. Oh, I awesome. I don't remember which one Nick I, was, but I'm not surprised. I'm glad it was. I'm glad I wasn't as wrong as I could have been. Was that uh, not the one who? challenged you in chat but the first person who brought up can we test supernatural claims mm, i don't recall at this point it's been four hours and i'm yeah fuzzy uh, twenty dollars from good, good question oh, go on matt can objective morality be grounded on the mechanisms of average non-pathological nervous systems um so objective morality is a morality that is founded on something other than, in my view, objective just means not subjective, which means it's not subject to the opinion or assessment of a conscious agent. And so, yeah, you can ground objective morality on seemingly anything. You could, you could ground objective morality on a dice roll, but we wouldn't tend to view it as morality because there's, there's, uh, randomness and no t direct tie to the outcome of a die roll versus the outcome of the action. So it's better to say we're going to we're going to identify an objective, non-absolute standard that this is what we're going to use and assess as morality, and then change it if we need to. Ye. Jacob's already complaining on Twitter and assuring everybody he'll make a. Don't worry, I'll make an episode to tell you how to think about this. And how to feel That's right, because I blocked him before he ever called in. Because he was, you know, w when your first response is, you've got pronouns in your bio, deduct 30 IQ points, um, Jacob's and, and not relevant. Yeah. And it's very frustrating that, oh, it, oh, we got pronouns in your bio. It's all, do you know why there's pronouns in my bio? It's not because I suspect for a second that someone's going to guess wrong. And as all of us will note, and if you, Jacob would call in a transatlantic call in show, um, they'd be happy generally speaking, I, do, I can't speak for everybody who's on there, but I know most of the people on the show, to point out as well that um, by and large, if you guess people's genders based on your observations, you're likely to be correct. If you tend to see someone who presents typically masculine or typically feminine, you will probably correctly get them as he, him, she, her. You will miss out on some of the people who are he, they, she, they, they, them. And you can sit there and pretend all day long that they don't. And the real thing you're worried about is if Bob and Steve were sitting there and somebody said, oh, this is Steve, they are a school teacher, you would refuse then to use the they. But now you're doing it once again on principle because you think you are the one who gets to determine what their actual gender is. And in reality, what's happening is you've been right most of your life when you infer someone's gender but you're going to be wrong on occasion i put he him as pronouns in my bio on there number one to normalize it because if you're sitting there yeah. with a whole bunch of people and everybody has a badge on with their pronouns all of a sudden the people who are the oddballs the ones who don't fit in with everybody else the ones whose pronouns don't necessarily match what your assumption is they don't have to do extra effort to get yeah. you to recognize their position. And the people around the table don't have to, you know, like, oh, we're all sitting at a table. And 
and everybody has an appearance um, that is fairly normative. And somebody goes, oh, hey, Jimmy, what are your pronouns? To highlight, it draws attention to that individual. And so just making it normal makes it more comfortable for the people who are constantly having to identify what their pronouns are. The fact of the matter is all of you have identified people your entire life. And the only time it seems to matter is as soon as somebody says there's something different than what you suspect they are. Yep. Right up until that moment, it didn't matter. Make a list of every area of life where someone's gender matters. And I think you'll find you've got a very, very, very small list, but even more so if you start going down this road of, yes, but gender is determined by sex. Um, you know, there's XX and XY and that's it. Well, first of all, that's not all there is biologically. Um, yes, it's fair to say that human beings are a sexually dimorphic species and that in general, there are two sexes and that in general, it's XX and XY, but those aren't the only chromosomes. Plus, in your entire life, if you met only 100 people in your lifetime, how many of them have you inspected the chromosomes of? How many of them have you inspected which genitalia they may or may not have? That's not the way any of this works on a personal level, identifying gender. Oh, but it, it matters for sports. It matters for sports. No, it doesn't. Yeah. There are cis women, by the way, who've been banned, at least one who's been banned from sports for having testosterone levels that are too high. If testosterone's the problem, then testosterone's what we should be worried about, not whether or not somebody's cis or trans. And throughout, this is the other thing that almost everybody misses, not every, almost everybody, all the people like Jacob miss. There are cis people and there are trans people. Neither of those are an insult. They're adjectives. Cis and trans. It's not a way of slighting anybody. You don't have a right to know whether someone is cis or trans. You don't have a need to know. But if someone's trans... And you're like, oh, no, 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 biologically, you're this. You can, you can say all that mumbo jumbo, woo, woke, spiritual, gender, soul stuff you want, but biologically, you're still this. Um, first of all, you've demonstrated that you don't have the capacity to actually understand these topics and discuss them honestly. But even more than that, if someone says, hi, I'm trans, then what they're telling you is, I'm not cis. That means they understand that they and what they were signed at birth and what sex you would determine based on their chromosomes if you knew what they were, but you never fucking will. And their view and your view of what sex they are from this biological perspective, they already know that it doesn't match. That's literally what trans means is that it departs from what they were assigned at birth. So what you're doing when you do that, oh, no, no, you're really this, is A, you're making you the arbiter of what somebody else's identity is, which is wrong, and B, you're pretending that someone who just identified themselves as trans is pretending as if they're cis, and that's not what's happening pretty much across the board. Are yeah. there people who are delusional? Yes, on all sides of it. Are there people who are suffering from mental illness? Yes, on all sides of it. But when you go down that road of, why on earth should we reaffirm your, your mental illness? First of all, it's not about mental illness. It's not in the DSM. It's not about reaffirming mental illness. But are you really saying that if someone has a mental illness, you're just going to treat them really shitty? Because congratulations, that's what religions have been doing for the entire history of, of humanity. Enough on that. Let's yeah. get back to the birthday stuff. We're going to have to move through them quick. We got about 10 minutes and quite a few to go. Okay. So, oh, Greg Murkowski, I don't think I read that one, said, happy birthday, Matt. Happy go, uh, happy go fuck yourself, Jimmy. This one's yours. 999 for the birthday, Raven. Happy birthday, Matt. Matt is annoyed with K, but that's okay. Jimmy's wig looks like a shaggy Minato, and we love it too. And we love it, yo. Happy birthday, drink water, eat food, Fergal Burgle, kick ass guitar solo. Ah. Uh, I, uh, I'm actually going to get a matching Merkin. Uh, $10 from Winter Scoop. To the untrained eye, we appear to have free will the same way untrained eyes see the universe revolving around Earth. When we truly examine it, we find the facts. Either way, we're just bags of meat. Well put. Thanks, Winter Scoop, for another analogy that I can try to make use of. I regret that this topic keeps coming up, honestly, and I'm, I'm, I'm just like 
it's the type of topic I enjoy talking about with my friends. Uh, it's a type of topic that's very hard to make consumable because of people's uh, pre-existing notions on the matter for to try and speak to a bulk of people on this when yeah. so many people are in, in so many places, it's almost impossible to do well, but it ends up being a red herring. But ten dollars from Roger Winslow. Happy birthday, Matt. There's so much that I thank you for. And I'll thank you for that and the fact that you're thanking me for stuff. So thanks, Roger. Okay, one more from the Raven 200. Happy Birdizzle to Matt Dilla Hizzle. We love Matt for Shizzle and all cool cats on the line. I wish it had been the Lizzle. Uh, except you, Jimmy, go fizzle yourself, and I'll see you all next time. Well done. There for Sizzle. $10. Um, wait, is that Australian? or? Yes. I think so. From Peebo Thulu. Hello, Matt. Mr. Tony might not have been in the right state of mind, I make a presumption, for how the conversation turned developed. Also, naughty word of your choice, Jimmy. Ah, uh, I got you. Clit. Was that asking me to say naughty word of my choice? I think that's that was a way of saying go fuck yourself. Oh, okay. Or whatever your chosen thing is that way. Clit's a funny word, so I just went with that. 22 Russian from uh, Ronnie Cortex, or maybe Rupal's Rupees, but there's all sorts of R's. It could be happy birthday, Matt, for March 31st. Thank you for making us think better. I wish you all the best from Brazil. I love Brazil. Thank you. That would, that would mean it's real. Brazilian food is probably my favorite non-American food. There you go. Ten dollars from people through wishing Mr. Tony all the very best. Looking forward to the calling back. Happy surviving Earth orbit stretch, Matt. Insert naughty word here for Jimmy. So it's kind of almost the same as the other one. That's right. Two clits. I don't know. Katie Looney, nine 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 says, "Thank you so much for what you both do." And Jimmy, would you ever do a video watching Veggie Tales? If I thought such a thing, I guess there was a demand, and I knew how to get around the uh, uh, the copyright stuff. Sure. That's for you. Ten dollars in logical larynx. This super chat is dedicated to promoting Matt's Patreon. Patreon.com slash atheist debates. Aha. Now that's actually worthwhile. Um, because Again. on the last episode I advertised it for pretty much the first time. Yes, I have a Patreon. Um, it's available for people to donate to. Yes, you can support um, the line, the network, and all of that. But you can also support me directly and perhaps indirectly if, if you like. Um, oh, my gosh, I'm playing chess and I'm a dumbass. I, I, I don't hardly ever advertise my Patreon. So there it is, patreon.com slash Atheist Debates. If you are the type of person who is capable uh, of donating a dollar, two dollars, ten dollars, whatever, uh, per video, per month, I put videos up there that are my debates, the debate reviews, thoughts about the, the debate reviews and arguing. Um, I'm doing a couple videos over the next four or five days. One of them will be a review about the debate with Perfect Dawa. Another one will be about whether or not claims are evidence. And another one will be about whether or not it's fair to, I think, I haven't decided on this third one yet, whether or not it's fair to consider atheism the default position via null hypothesis. Uh, because there are some pedantic people who who think that because the null hypothesis was created to do a statistical analysis, that all of a sudden it doesn't matter, or it isn't correct to use it if the uh, statistical set is vanishingly small. And I'm like, it's still to statistics, it's just the statistics of small numbers, which means your conclusion's unreliable, but the null hypothesis stays the same, and it's not the null hypothesis that has a problem with a lack of statistical confirmation it's the hypothesis but go ahead hell yeah we have four more minutes uh how to rule an asteroid says happy birthday matt i'm hoping to see you this summer at baja Khan in the next town over for me go fuck yourself jimmy huh? we got a lot of these to get through in like five minutes yep uh All right, i will go yeah like faster. 15 1990 from Atheist Jesus. Happy birthday, Matt. I've been an atheist all my life. You taught me how to better understand theists. You're making a difference. Keep it up. Thank you so much. That's most of what I want to do. 
55 euro from Dragon. Well, thank you, Dragon. Very, very generous. You already wow. donate time. Happy birthday, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday to me for sure. I don't know $50 from me, I Dane. Happy birthday, Matt. So many ignorant callers on your birthday. Don't eat vegan cheesecake, please. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy P.S. You can just pronounce my screen name or pronounce me screen name as yay or fully like yay die in. See okay. the DIA the DAI I'm still I don't know how to pronounce that 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 syllable. Yay uh, day in. So that's die for okay. me because of die Vernon. But got it. Yay die in. That's what I'm going to go. Much with. more helpful to say $50 from and then the very first thing is a pronunciation of your screen name rather than the last thing. But cuz yeah. I'm not going to remember. I'm going to try. I'll, but do I'll remember best. yay. Polly Pocket says, happy birthday, Matt. You've helped me make sense out of why I'm an atheist. Thank you for all you do. Lots of Sweet. love to the crew and to screeners and to mods. Jimmy, go fuck yourself, my dude. Will do. Awesome. Thank you, Polly. $10 from Bob. Happy birthday, Matt. You're an asset to humanity. I hope so. And when I'm not, I hope I get corrected. And it's not somebody who's just coming in because they think they're right, but they don't understand what they're talking about. Like most callers. Yeah. <laughs> All Things Considered, $20, says, Happy birthday, Matt. I once saw a debate where someone knew you as a child, who knew you as a child, said he thought you would be a shining star in the South Baptist community. Well, in my opinion, he was half right. You're a star just in a different community. Thanks, All Things. Yeah, that was the debate uh, against Michael Lacona at the Austin Baptist Church. There were former church members from my church as a kid who came down. He asked questions <laughs> during the uh, Q&A. New Zealand, $20 from Yves Samard. Walking people through trans basics as old as it gets is incredibly helpful. My child's trans, so I'm constantly walking people through basics and learning every time. So thank you. And and I'm getting walked through it and corrected. I'm in a I'm in a very fortunate position because my partner, who's one of the uh, hosts on the Transatlantic Call Show, is trans. And so I have someone here all the time to bounce my thoughts off of. Uh, we don't actually talk about it all that much because by and large, we just live our lives because in our daily life doing stuff, um, we, which if either of us is cis or trans or whatever, it doesn't impact a thing, yeah. but because we're both activists and w I want to be better. Um, I have, I have her, I have Katie and Ben and all the, uh, and all the other people on uh, transatlantic, uh, to ping off of all the time. All my, almost out of time. I'm going to ruin our show. I, uh, I let them know. We'll be a couple minutes late. Uh, let's see. Uh, 6969 from Kathleen Moncleef. Happy birthday, Matt. If you don't get everything you want, Jimmy can put that wig back on and speak to the manager. Go fuck yourself, internet friends. There Not quite the Karen wig, but... Jimmy's a know, perfect Karen. Enough. Yeah. 10 euros from Yellow Banana. Muslim friend believers... Oh, no. Muslim friend believes depression is all in your head. Kind of is. And Islam is the solution. I argue that's much more complex than any research you're aware of that I can point to and your thoughts on general. Uh, I'm not the right person to talk to you about this. I would call in when Shannon Q wow. is hosting... Uh, Skeptalk tomorrow. Yep. I agree. Uh, John Kennel says, and here is Jimmy's equal attention gift. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> Here's you know thing. he asked for it. $10 <laughs> from Bob. Steve works in Pittsburgh. He's also lying about being a teacher. That's, that's <laughs> fair. I, I, I did all that. By the way, well, I'll save it. Yeah. $50 from Tall Girl 195 Jimmy, do the thing. Hashtag Team GPP. Matt Dillahutty, total disaster, folks. I mean, have you seen this guy's arguments? Weak, and believe me, I know debates. And he doesn't have what it takes. His followers are a small group of losers who can't think for themselves. Sad. I wouldn't waste my time with this loser. Not, hashtag not impressed. Hashtag debating disaster. Debating disaster from ChatGPT, I feel like, shows how powerful it is, and I'm intimidated. That's a solid hashtag. $50 from Northern Spike. Hey, Northern Spike. Jimmy, read a chat GTB in Trump's voice as though it's what Trump would say. They basically both sent it at the same time. Uh, I guess They're I could do the ad. Like, Matt Dillahutty, real loser, sad. Wait, I had one of myself. Uh, okay. No, no, no. Uh, look, folks, Jimmy Snow, or as he calls himself, Dear Mr. Atheist, is a big problem. Some say he's smart, but let me tell you, his beliefs are all wrong. Terrible. He spends his time spreading lies about religion and social issues. Sad. And don't even get me started on his hair. He's a total disaster. Believe me. We need to stop this guy before he does more damage. I'm calling for protests at Jimmy Snow's home. 
That's the kind of thing he'd actually say. Anyway, uh, that took way too much time on those two. And so now it's all my fault. This one's for you. 1669 Canadian from Rebuswind. HPD for one of my favorite. Happy birthday. Teacher online. Happy birthday. Yes. For one of my favorite teachers online. I can't stress this enough and I can't think of enough without Matt. I wouldn't be a skeptic. Go fuck yourself with that wig on Jimmy. Uh, happy birthday in Chinese. There we go. Uh, hell and, yeah. And thanks. I don't know why my brain balked on HPD, but next time we do is next time we do a zoom with Rebus on remind me to have him run through with you. Uh, the Chinese translation of the Kalam because it can't directly, uh, uh, it was very interesting. We went through it. It was very interesting. Topcat2069 says $10. Easy. Actually, they just said 10.00. They didn't say anything about dollars. You're right. 1169 Canadian from here. So I'm going to China soon. I don't know if I can see or call the show, but I will for sure try my best. If not, I will miss you guys for a, f a few mouth. Uh, but I will send balloons from China. Wait, maybe not balloons. <laughs> I'm going to say a few months. Uh, yeah, a few months. Yeah, not balloons. I'd rather not go to prison. Uh, Jeremy says $20. Happy birthday, Matt. Matt, happy birthday. Thank you for all your efforts over the years. It's meant so much to me. Jimmy, I won't pull the punch. I think you're a douchebag. I'll be the one to go F himself. Thank you very much. I might have changed some words there. He might have said swell guy. I'd have. Okay. Check uh, From Aiton to Han, uh, there's a hundred. It's, it's not shekels, is it? It is. Yep. Uh, so from Israel, our democracy is falling apart. Matt, you're wrong about the number of atheists in Israel, as you mentioned on several occasions. Would love to explain more religion is winning here. Uh, F. Netanyahu. Okay, so I've, I've never, I don't really know, and I don't talk about the number of atheists in Israel, but the number of secular Jews in Israel, I've usually reported as around 40 or around 50%, and in the latest number is 41.4%. 41.4% of Jews living in Israel are secular Jews. That's at uh, Wikipedia, and then you can go and cite the sources and everything else. Um, I may be wrong, but those are the numbers that I have, and it's not based on an individual's perception about whether or not uh, religion is winning. I would say that um, fundamentalism represents a loud but vocal minority in the united states but that doesn't mean it's not winning yeah that is the last one unless one came in while you were talking nope we're good to go so thank you everybody for watching we are headed over to r and Ra's channel where uh we'll be reading the book of mormon matt happy birthday i'll uh, be joining you friday i hope for those festivities uh any any last words as as we go as we grow old i just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who participated this four hours flew by thanks to the people who called including the ones that i wasn't particularly fond of of the discussion pass on my apologies to Arn for holding this up a little bit later and everybody else we now free you to go to inferior places and well to, not inferior places because you some of you are going to go watch this thing on orange channel and that's not inferior at all please tune in for the other shows and you know try and help build a better world See you oh, yeah. later.